Hello everybody, it's come down to this. The Michelin Countdown to Green for the final IMSA iRacing Pro Series event. We're at Watkins Glen International for Konica Minolta presents IMSA iRacing at WGI. Hello everybody, uh, I'm John Heindorf, Nick Damon and Ben Constantiris uh, with me as well as we have some qualifying to come. And then, of course, the last 90 minutes of our iRacing uh, I racing competition for IMSA this year. Timing and scoring, sound and vision, we've got it all for you tonight. It's on RS2 IMSA Radio, at IMSA Radio, if you would like to speak to us on Twitter as well. Good to have your company this evening. Let me welcome the team and bring you in. We've under 40 minutes to go to the race, but we have got some track action before then. Let's check in. Uh, we are extremely socially distanced to Ben Constantinus, who's in the French Alps at the moment, but through the wonders of technology, joins us in the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre. This is what it's all come down to, Ben, and what a circuit. What a circuit for the finale tonight. Absolutely. So exciting to have the Watkins Glen track. It's the older iteration of the track, a model um, of the track from a good nine, ten years ago now. Uh, so it's bumpier uh, than we see in real life. It's got different great, uh, different uh, uh, levels of grip in different parts of the tarmac that's laid, different types of tarmac, loads of different things going on for them to drive. And of course, we've got this championship and actually quite a few rookies involved uh, as well as some new names and some sadly missing names, but uh, a real mix-up, I think, for our final race. Uh, and a couple of drivers have qualified through into this uh, via their performances in effectively the Michelin Pilot version uh, of the IMSA series as well, the IMSA Challenge series, uh, including the number 30, Michael Cooper, who is a pretty tidy sim driver. He's driving for Flying Lizard. We'll see those tremendously uh, evocative colours with the reptile on the side of a Ford, which is going to take me some getting used to, because Flying Lizard to me means Porsche all day and every day. Nick Damon, uh, we've watched with interest this series develop from Sebring, from Super Sebring back in March, where BMW literally steamroll it the opposition they'd taken the opportunity they're taking it seriously since then we've seen nick tandy win for porsche kenton cook who's not here either neither nick or kenton are here the non-bmw winners for this final round but it seems with the balance of performance that imsa have worked on with the seriousness that the other manufacturers have now uh, applied to this series that we've got a pretty level playing field here for this race, and there's clearly going to be, uh, you know, a bit of bragging rights for the final race, but there's a championship race, race to be won as well between two BMW drivers. Yeah, BMW absolutely flew out of the blocks um, at Sebring. It seems like a lifetime ago, it was only about eight weeks. Um, and they told the rest of the teams how to do it. You sit down with two or three professional drivers, you give them the help from sim drivers, you sit with the engineers, you work out the settings, and they've flew out and they carried on that momentum into Laguna Seca and then it began to look like the other teams were coming back a bit. Ford perennially unlucky until the last time out of VIR. Oh, Porsche didn't really seem to have the team running correctly. Again, they, they, they managed to get that working firstly with Ayachan Guven and then finally with Nick Tandy as well winning at Road America. And the other teams began to take it more seriously but throughout it all, the dogged consistency of Bruno Spengler and we slash out at the last race, which luckily he can, the uh, equal um, reliability of Nicky Katzberg has just put BMW in the lead, not because they have the fastest car anymore, not because they're the best prepared car anymore, but because they started fast and they kept consistent. Live and exclusive, we will have qualifying uh, and we'll let you know how that's going once the cars get on to the circuit. In our Michelin countdown agree, let's check in immediately with something that's been a staple of what uh, we've been talking about in these last six weeks and that are, those are the Porsche keys to the race. Now I've cut these right down this week because really it comes to just four points. Point number one and this is it's possibly the biggest key of the Porsche keys to the race. It's the huge comedy handover 
the, the presentation key to the race, Nick, and that's a smart start for a smart race. And what I mean by that is the early parts of the race here, and particularly the early part of the first lap, when the, the field are close together. In real life, we've seen accidents in the past going up through the uphill S's. Yeah. You've got to keep out of that to start with. It's desperately important. This is, Everyone is getting faster, so there are no easy passes anymore in this series. More importantly, at Watkins Glen, there are vast parts of the circuit where there are no passes because it is a single track the whole way round. Especially, really, when we get going, because when you start, you're on cold tyres. Now, I, I know from my own experience only today that you can make the greatest start in the world if you then accidentally lose it on a corner. You just watch 27 cars go past you and making you're that up, doesn't matter how line. fast you yeah. are, if you, if you were in fourth, you're then 31st, you've completely ruined it. It is discretionary to be a part of Valor, John. If you start sixth, you win the first lap of sixth, well done. And following on from that, Ben, pick your passes. There are a couple of action areas here, which we'll talk about when we'll see the trap map. But there are so many places where you just have to be patient. It's a one groove, one line track around WGI. And we're on the full Grand Prix circuit here as well. There aren't many heavy braking zones where you could uh, be a little bit later and drive down the inside. There are lots of medium to high speed turns. Uh, one of the places you would expect by looking at the map to be an overtaking spot, the inner loop, the bus stop chicane, because it's so, so fast, because the curves are so big, uh, you just can't do it there. Into the boot perhaps is the place to do it. Coming out of the boot is quite low grip, so the car does get squirrely. But then the corner after that, again, is medium to high speed and then onto the start finish straight medium to high speed as well so yeah. it is going to be about making mistakes uh that cause passes rather than the traditional kind of throwing it down the inside two or four tires nick we've seen a variety of strategies we normally say and the tires yes. here that that's a bit of an in joke uh, with us here at imsa radio and radio show limited two or four tires or possibly even no tyres. What's the grip level here? Because we've seen a variety of strategies employed throughout the previous five races. Yeah. Left-hand side tyres here, generally speaking, are the ones that take the hammer because the faster, the longer, higher energy corners tend to be right-handers. Yeah, everything fast is right-handed. Um, there's one medium-fast left-hander and that's it. So you are going wearing out those left-side tyres. It's a really interesting question because I think you know I've been surprised by the amount of tyres taken. Um, certainly um, at VIR I thought they could get through that and everyone I think took four I think a couple of them may have taken two for track position which didn't work out too well uh, the track itself is old an old tarmac on the 10 tends to be low grip but doesn't this mean it's low wear John so this is one of the things that the guys will have done is they'll have pounded lap off and lap off and lap off and lap with the setup they want to see what they can do and more importantly whether if they are marginal on tyres over an hour and a half but then actually it, does, it is worth having that extra 28 second stop now personally because of the layout of the track, I think we're going to see a lot of two tyres, but that's entirely from kind of educated guesswork rather than any setup work. And, and track position is still important here because of the passing situation that we've mentioned. So it may depend how far down the field you are and whether we've had that competition yellow. Don't forget there will be a competition yellow tonight. Ben, finally, I, I, I put in championship contenders. We'll talk a little bit more about who they are in a moment but it's absolutely crucial for the rest of the field to know if there is a championship contender in their rear view mirror because they're not going to make any friends by taking out either of the bmws who are in with a shout and we've seen it before haven't we in uh, laguna seca for instance was heavily affected by back markers getting in the way of our leading contenders and actually i think it wiped out two or three of our leaders uh, during that particular race in terms of character we have the similar situation here you come up to slower traffic again because it's hard to pass uh, it's going to be hard to get past that traffic and I, I feel that the field spread although everyone's got a lot better got quite a few new names here some people making their debuts and it does feel to me as there could be quite uh, so there could be some rookies making a lot of errors and therefore we might get a bit of traffic so uh, they will need the slower cars will need to be getting out the way of our leaders and then as you say anybody who's got uh, either Nicky Katzberg or Bruno Spengler around them will need to know that there is uh, a significant uh, thing happening around them correct but 
they're still racing. So they're not going to jump out the way and let the two of those go out to the front and win. Although Spengler's had a pretty good uh, <laughs> hop at it every race so far. Well, let's talk about that. And let's talk about the championship situation because the five races that we've had now comes down to this hour and a half competition. As it stands at the moment, um, and, and there is, we must say, there, there is uh, the worst score, the worst finish will be dropped. So the best four of five results at the moment, uh, we could have put up the full scores at the moment, which would have actually seen Shinya Mishimi in second uh, place there. But when you take dropped scores into account, it is 128 points of Bruno Spengler, just nine points ahead of Nicky Katzberg. Kenton Cook in third, equal with Philip Eng at the moment. But Kenton, as we've mentioned, having won the last time out and Nick Tandy having won the time before that, they're going to be undefeated in the championship because they have not, or at least they've, they've gone a one and done, win and done, if you will, uh, because they are not in the championship. No sign of Philip Eng in the practice and qualifying either, by the way, which no surprise, Rodrigo Fluca uh, in the Ford number 47 has put the best lap time in at the moment. We'll get the qualifying in a moment. So that's with the best four of five events scored, Spengler by nine points from Katzberg, which means, and I hope I've got this right, I have had the abacus and my shoes. And, in fact, I, I have yes. no shoes and yes. socks on at the moment i am uh, I, I am sandy shaw in the <laughs> uh, in the haggerty global broadcast center at the moment I can i say john if it wasn't actually a legal requirement i would be socially distant from your feet anyway well if that's that's true enough that'd be right <laughs> so so that's how it stands now what does that mean well let's tell you how we score this it's exactly the same in the imsa weather tech sports car championship with i racing as it would be in the full championship. So if you win, you take 35 points home. Uh, there's a three point gap between first and second, and then two points down the field. So 35, 32, 30, 28, 26 for your top five. Spengler drops his worst finish so far, which was only a sixth position at Mid Ohio. Nicky Katzberg had an absolute disaster in VIR and finished 28. But at the moment, that doesn't matter because that's the score he's going to drop so put all that to one side and let's not have you do the arithmetic uh, we've done that for you <laughs> what does that mean it's easy for katzberg he really needs to win this race today and if he wins and spengler is only sixth then he takes the championship for spengler well he's in a great position he'll win the championship even if katzberg wins if he can finish fourth he'll win on points if he finishes fourth if he finishes fifth they're actually tied on points but on count back again exactly as it would happen in the weathertech championship he's gonna win but we have to go a long way down for the tie break it goes on your best finishes if katzberg wins here today he'll have two wins so will spengler his third best result would be a, a second place same as spengler and we go down to the fourth best result where Spengler came second and WeatherTech Raceway Laguna get Spaseka, Katzberg came third. So Spengler, if he comes fifth and Katzberg wins, he's still going to take the championship on count back with the tie. Spengler can still win if Spengler is sixth or worse and he finishes second. Basically, start looking for a five place differential between Katzberg and Spengler that's the way it looks at but if if Spengler's in the top four it's all over regardless of where Nicky Katzberg finishes so it's actually it's a little bit complicated Nick but at least not too much those five place differentials is what you've got to look for well, at the end of the race only up to Spengler finishing sixth yeah because he has a sixth in the bag true so he, if he finishes seventh this will become his drop score. Correct. So realistically, Katzberg has to win and Spengler has to be sixth or lower yeah. to get the championship. So it's 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 a you know very much advantage Spengler. But um, if Katzberg finished second no, and Spengler was sixth, no, because he still be, wins the championship. No, it'd be tied on points, but of course then it'd be two wins to one win and Spengler will get it on count back. Ah, yeah, okay. So I'll give it, you that. It is a, yeah, it is a, it's, a, it's quite a strong chance of a tied score. But Spengler really just needs to throw it in the top four, which will, yeah, it, 
on his pace and what he's done so far this season shouldn't be a problem. But as Nicky Katzberg found, he made a mistake in qualifying, didn't get a qualifying time in at VIR, overtook about 77 cars, yeah. but every time he overtook something, something went wrong. He either, yeah. he either went off track, he got tapped, he got the wrong end of the yellow flag, he had a, a minor coming together, and that is a track where it's actually a little bit easy to overtake. So if you get yourself out of track, as you pointed out in the keys to the race, John, if you make a minor mistake, you, you are so many places down that getting back to really, really difficult. So I'm pretty certain that Bruno is going to qualify where he qualifies and drive the most steady three or four laps to begin with and then work on what's doing next. And, and Ben, do you think that might affect the tactics that we see from Speng Spengler's in the number seven, by the way. So watch out for the BMW Team Red car. We, we know what that car looks like. We've seen it at the sharp end of the field an, an awful lot. Do you think that might make a slightly more conservative strategy then from Spengler than we've seen in the past? Or is that a dangerous thing to do? Absolutely. And he doesn't want to get himself caught up by unnecessary moves. But it, I, I think a racing driver will always tell you that if they back off too much, if they get too comfortable, uh, then they find themselves in strife. So he will want to get his head down. I'm told uh, he's a very determined driver. As you can see, the qualifying time has just started to tick. We're going to have cars out on track on individual tracks in qualifying, so they won't get held up by others. Um, and they only have uh, two laps to set a time. So as we saw with Nicky Katzberg and VIR, if you screw up qualifying, it will affect you. Uh, you won't get a time and you'll be right at the tail of the field. So we've got cars out on the track. We'll hear some engine noise uh, coming through as well, which is one of the things that I've enjoyed massively uh, about the modelling on the sim for iRacing. We've seen it in the DNLS, and we've got around six of the DNLS on Saturday as well. But if you aren't watching the pictures at the moment, and I understand you might not have the bandwidth or you might be moving around and you're just listening in on IMSA Radio RS2, listen carefully because you can tell that's a BMW. If a Porsche goes by, you will hear the different, uh, the different engine noise. The number 10 of Nicky Katzberg is in a black, blue and red livery this weekend. It's mostly red for the number 7. Those are the two cars that we've got to keep an eye open for. Just a 10 minute qualifying session and we're already 90 seconds into it. I remember in those 10 to 10 minutes session, you just get two timed laps. It doesn't matter if you could do a short track, you could do seven time laps. It doesn't matter. You get one more up lap, two time laps. So realistically, your tyres aren't actually up to peak performance that second lap. And if you get what's called an off track, so if you cut the course and go slightly wide, you get what's a 1x in I racing, but it doesn't really matter. Apart from that, it'll completely delete that lap. Yeah. So a slight off, not a massive accident, a slight off means that lap doesn't count. You only have the second lap to count. And if they don't both count, you're at the back. Slightly different livery for Rodrigo Fluca, the man from deepest, darkest Peru in the number 47 Ford. A little more red and white on that car than we've seen uh, this season. It's normally been a dark grey or a black Ford uh, GT. Remember, 50 cars uh, maximum. All drivers from the, it, almost all drivers this weekend from uh, the IMSA Real World Series uh, and uh, sanctioned series. So now here comes through the S's, the uphill S's, the number seven, the red, grey and white BMW M8 GTE in BMW parlance. Of course, it's a GT Le Mans car in IMSA competition heading in towards the inner loop. It's an insanely quick entry into that down a gear in the middle and nailing all the curbs before you go into the outer loop. This big sweeping right hand of it. It's quite highly banked, actually, uh, in the sim as well as in real life. Then downhill to the left hand. I think that's one of the hardest corners on the circuit. It slightly tightens you. It's a bit like, it's, it's quick, but in, in some respects, it's a bit like the turn seven at Road Atlanta, where you always think you can go through it a bit quicker until you fall off. Yes, yeah, that, that has happened many times. <laughs> uh, delighted to say that in the FAF Motorsport Porsche, Robert Wiggins is back with us still refining the use of that hand-operated braking system that we've seen him uh, use to great advantage in the last few weeks. Just on the right-hand side of his rig, he has uh, what looks like a, a rally car sequential shift or a, an e-brake, a, a handbrake. It is, in fact, 
his way of working the brakes and he has we've talked to him about this before he has tremendous feel on that nick which is quite an extraordinary thing to do when he's one-handed changing down through the gearbox and it, the uh, very powerful direct driver uh, virtual steering wheel he has there he got a he went over a curve got a huge kickback you can see him kind of trying to hang on to the steering wheel at the same time as braking on the handbrake so one arm is not always that easy when you're getting the full effects of the very powerful force feedback Spengler with the best time but now he's been no. beaten by Katzberg and then Fluka goes to the top Ben Constantinus will be our man watching the action from the pit lane and scrolling through on his iRacing rig this is really hotting up now at the sharp end of the field but BMW's second third and fourth at the moment it's great to be able to actually be a second in front of you so I can see exactly what's happening and uh, Rodrigo Fluca with a mighty time, three tenths of a second faster than Katzberg. John Edwards now in third position, slotting ahead of Bruno Spengler, but only 24 cars at a time. A lot of times set, but not allowed on that first lap. Just as Nick says, track limits tricky here again. Uh, and, and Michael Cooper up in the fifth position. It's his first outing in the big show. He's been plying his trade in the challenge series michael cooper might be a name perhaps that's not well known to imza fans uh, but it should be uh, known to sim racing fans because he's a very very tidy virtual racer ben absolutely uh, nearly 4000 uh, i rating and a, an a grade license so uh, only a dozen drivers in this field with an a grade license you need so much experience to be able to do that Van Gisbergen, and probably one of the best that we've got here tonight. Augusto Canapino is the god of uh, our <laughs> grid this evening. Um, but with the Ferrari, he's hampered uh, running that Ferrari. Second lap's through now, and Spengler has improved. Katzberg did not improve. Yes, he does. He goes up into second spot ahead of Spengler. Uh, so Fluka stays ahead. Uh, Rodrigo Fluka has been the king of qualifying, Nick, uh, throughout this uh, IMSA I racing Pro Invitational, Fluka, Katzberg, Spengler, Michael Cooper, Kalmason up in the to fifth in the Ford. So a decent smattering of cars. Ford, BMW, BMW, BMW. Now, who's just improved? John Edwards has gone up to third. Augustin Canapino has been one of the few drivers who's made the Ferrari sing, and what a result it's for him last time out. Not few drivers; the only drivers made it sing. I mean, I think you know yeah. the uh, the GT3 versus the Ferrari is sorry, the GTE versus the Ferrari is not a stronger position proposition in iRacing as the GT3 which is, is very very strong on quicker circuits. GT not doesn't seem so good on these American circuits and that's been proven by the fact all the other manufacturers got to win. They're noticeably here John we're not seeing really any of the Porsches traveling the top of the timesheets. Yeah true enough. Uh, Katzberg uh, in the Cat Bird seat at the moment in terms of the championship qualifies oh yes he cron jumps up into second place that's another bmw and now it's a ford and then half a dozen bmws katzberg edwards foley robbie foley for turner bmw in fifth Conor de Filippi in sixth in the 25 spengler now down to seventh and that's danger ben that is danger for spengler if he's starting three or four rows back he's right in the mix there guy cosmo in the bright orange car one of I think seven, no, make that eight uh, liveries that our good friend Andy Blackmore uh, has got in the race this week. And great to see Guy Cosmo uh, running uh, in this final event of the season. But Ben, you've got to say, Spengler in seventh, that's not where he wants to be. That's potential trouble down there at the start of the race. Exactly. He, he did manage to improve on that second lap as well, but it just simply wasn't enough. Richard Highstand now slots himself into fifth, so it's oh. eight for Spengler. Uh, Shane Van Gisbergen, the best of the Porsches, although he's not running really as a works driver. The only works Porsche driver entered is Lawrence Van Thorpe. We've lost all the others uh, because of uh, other commitments, uh, and therefore Porsche really not putting much commitment to this. I'm surprised not to see Robbie Foley a little bit further up, sixth position. Uh, he's been driving the new uh, GT4 yes. M4 that has just been released on iRacing uh, in the uh, challenge. He finished third, I think. Yeah, there's been a big update recently, including the new GT4 M4, Turner Motorsport, big uh, proponent and exponent of BMW racing, of course. And Robbie Foley's been racing in the, uh, in the ranks of the DNLS as well in GT3, where the BMW there is still the Z4. 
of course the uh, the front engine coupe still a great looking car in my mind so it's van gisbergen 10th cooper yeah, ninth, then that's... spengler then felipe then robbie forley high stand edwards katzberg cron lots of bmws in there and i thought michael cooper might have been a bit further up well interesting the worry for bruno spengler is starting in row four but behind him is take no prisoners fast starter shane van gisbergen so he's got a man behind him who's who who I'm sure knows the champion position and he's going to force his points. I wouldn't be at all surprised if those positions changing uh, on the first lap, hopefully with no incident. We mentioned Augustin Canapino, he's the best of the Ferraris, but right there with it, right under a tenth of a second, Jules Gounon uh, in the number 89 Ferrari. That's a really good run for Jules in that Ferrari, Ben, because as Nick was saying, Canapino really thus far in this championship, the only man to have made a Ferrari work and, and Gunon all of a sudden has hooked that car up here at Watkins Glen. Yeah, fantastic to see Gunon. He's, uh, we haven't seen him in the full championship, so uh, I think he's only third round uh, that he's raced in and kind of gaining experience. So to get that Ferrari working just a couple of hundredths of a second behind Canapino is very, very impressive. So we are coming to the end of qualifying. I think everybody has got a couple of laps in so we're not too far away from ending our michelin countdown to green and heading into our race broadcast we'll give the team over in boston a chance to process what they've seen as one or two drivers dive into the pitch richard westbrook gets the ford uh, up does he know that was after the checkered flag that's just coming into the pit lane i see that changing uh, now so we've got 13 minutes to the green flag and we'll uh, run through the grid as soon as it's confirmed. And there it is with Rodrigo Fluke, a 142.3 for a, the Ford on pole. And just look at the top 10. Ford, three BMWs, Ford, three BMWs, Ford and Shane Van Gisbergen gets into 10th place. So here's how they line up. Front row, Fluka and Jesse Kron. Katzberg, championship contender. The best of the championship contenders for BMW on the inside of row two with his teammate John Edwards alongside him. This is good news for the BMW runners. There's no team orders here. But Edwards, uh, but Katzberg, excuse me, generally speaking around him has got BMWs. High stands on the inside of row number three with Robbie Forley who likes a quick start for turn of BMW in the blue and yellow machine. Then Conor de Filippi, another BMW on the inside of row number four. Bruno Spengler, championship leader, half a second of pole position and mired in the bottom end of the top 10 with Michael Cooper and Shane Van Gisbergen right up his tailpipes. At the, at the bottom end of the top 10. And I would think, Nick Damon, that Spengler will not be, will not be too happy about no, that. No, I think he's at least two positions further back than he would have wanted to be. Um, he's got a, some fast-starting non-BMWs around him. It's a very congested first few corners and, and Katzberg starting third um, is he's going to have a clear view of the start, know what to do, and should be able to get through cleanly on his own volition. Whereas I think that Spengler is going to have to rely on the, uh, the accommodation of others around him to avoid any possible incident. Yeah, don't disagree with that uh, at all. So we've got about 60 seconds to wrap our Michelin count down to green. Ben Constant Juris, here's the tough question. Nicky Katzberg really has to win. He's in a good position at the moment. Can he turn that grid position into the victory? Katzberg's going to win it, but where will Spengler end up and will he stay out of trouble? It's going to be a difficult first lap for him. Uh, it's a bold prediction from Ben. Katzberg to win. Can Spengler get fifth or better? Spain can get fifth or better, but I think getting past Rodrigo Fluke is going to be a major issue. He's been really quick, really unlucky. Finally, he's got his nose in front. Other drivers with more pressure than he has chance to run free. Ford seems to be working well here at Watkins Glen. I'm going to back Fluke, and I'm going to therefore say it's going to be Spengler's championship. At IMSA Radio, if you want to get in touch with us here in the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre, we'll wind up the... Michelin counts down to green with a reminder that we'll have Michelin post-race tech at the end of the race. We will crown a champion for the IMSA iRacing Pro Invitational Series. We're at Watkins Glen and we go racing next.
Well, it's Watkins Glen International. What a place to have our finale for the IMSA iRacing Pro Invitational 2020. It's Cunningham and Alta presents IMSA iRacing at the Glen. An hour and 30 minutes of wheel to wheel, bumper to bumper, door to door, and sometimes door to arm court racing. It's all going to be sorted out in the next one hour and well 40 minutes or so from now as we're counting down towards the green flag hello everybody i'm john hindorf we'll take you through what's going on with the championship in just a few moments time ben constant and nick damon joining me socially distance of course in the haggerty global broadcast center a champion will be crowned tonight uh, this is the cunningham and Alter presents imsa I racing at Watkins Glen International and delighted to say that we'll welcome to our broadcast uh, this evening a very special guest in front of the packed crowd here at Watkins Glen International. We'll just wait to make sure that he is online and he is wearing the Conning and Minolta shirt as well. Hello to Travis Hogue, the general manager of Wayne Taylor Racing, but representing Conning and Minolta tonight travis thanks for joining us uh you're looking fine fettle there look we got a chance to crown a champion tonight this is going to be very exciting are you looking forward to it absolutely it's uh it's good to keep racing going when we're when we're all sitting here trying to uh stay stay afloat with this stuff going on right now what's been the situation with uh, the cunning and Alta racing wayne tiller racing team uh, how close are you guys to getting back have you been back have you never gone away we're not that far away in in real terms of going back to full metal racing again for you guys you know we we really haven't slowed down all that much we've we've kind of worked away from the shop we've kind of been in touch with uh a lot of people throughout this process um Konica Minolta has been really good about helping us with some of the new technologies and the way that we can kind of work remotely since we haven't been able to actually be in the workshop. So as we've been kind of going through this, safety has been our main concern. So usually we'd be spending time on race cars and business stuff, but working together with everybody, it's how do we get back to the track safely and, and get us going again. So it's, it's a different mindset for sure. And, you know, we are so used now to seeing that glossy black Cadillac DPI in the Cunningham and Alta uh, colours, Travis. But how important is it to build a relationship with your partner, with your sponsor, particularly when it's a, a global brand like Cunningham and Alta? And what do they bring, apart from putting a sticker on, on the side of the car to Wayne Taylor Racing? I think the sticker on the side of the car is probably the, the smallest portion they bring to the table. Um, the partnership extends way beyond just the racing. It uh, When we were dealing with things such as, you know, Konica Minolta in Japan, and then we have drivers like Kamui coming over, and, and then it's the, the business side with IMSA, and obviously Konica Minolta stepping in for the iRacing tonight. It's, it's a broad relationship. Um, they bring a lot more when it comes to technology, some of the stuff that they do with, with other partners that we have. So the sticker on the car, as you mentioned, that's that's just uh, to put the name out there. The rest of it is a lot behind the scenes. So a proper business-to-business -business relationship is what we're talking about here, Travis. Yeah, business-to-business. -business. Um, also, with as you've seen, the Conic Minolta Business Center at IMSA, it's, it's not just for Wayne Taylor Racing or IMSA. They're behind the scenes putting that business center together for everybody at the racetrack. So, yes, they're partners of ours. Yes, we work side by side with them all the time. But other teams have the ability to use their services. Other teams can see the technologies of the racetrack so they can use it for their business stuff. Um, you know, you probably couldn't ask for a better partner. You know, when you've got uh, guys like Rick Taylor, Michael Matei, they're they're constantly following the racing. They they want they are part of the team. They're you know through this whole thing. I've talked to Michael frequently. I know Wayne's talked to Rick Taylor frequently, and we as a team have never had any concerns because it's a partnership. We're all in this together, and we've got to get to the other side. So uh, I don't think you could ask for a better partner. 
Uh, and literally just uh, an hour or so, maybe a little bit more, uh, IMSA releasing their uh, racing guidelines for when we go back racing 4th of July weekend uh, with the, the sort of the, the old Paul Revere date at, uh, at Daytona, which I'm looking forward to massively. Um, you've had a chance, I'm sure, to, to have a look at that. I know all of the, the teams and the partners have contributed uh, through IMSA to putting those together. Excited, first of all, to go racing and... and those regulations, IMSA have have looked at this in a in, in a very sensible and pragmatic way to get back racing with safety as the paramount. I think you you were just excited to get back to the track now as we're going to the twenty four. It's been a, a long off time, if you will. Um, but looking at the work that IMSA has done, uh, I know they've been working closely with you know Department of Homeland Security, trying to make sure that we have everything covered for a lot of international drivers. Uh, I've got sitting on my desk right now a 35-page document of all the work that they put into this to make sure that you know everybody at the racetrack is safe and we put on a good show. Um, I, I don't think anybody anticipated the amount of work that was going to go into this back in March when you know everybody kind of said, "All right, we're not going to go to Sebring," um, you know. Now that this is happening, all the teams are trying to figure out new ways of doing business. You know, we're working close with Conic Minolta on a new format to be able to entertain fans and guests at the racetrack since we're not allowed to have them there. And we're working on some interactive stuff that, you know, again, having a partner like that that has the technology behind them, we're able to do some things that probably not a lot of teams are able to do yet where we can link our fans up to places like uh, websites and the IMSA stuff and also give them a little bit of behind the scenes while they're watching from home. Travis, thanks very much. Pass on our best to everybody at the WTR shop and, and thank our friends at Conning and Minolta for the support tonight and throughout the years and continuing on at IMSA WeatherTech as well. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Looking forward to the race tonight. We are too. Travis Hogg then joining us uh, from, I'm pretty sure that was Wind Taylor Racing uh, shop there. So those guys are uh, getting a jump on their preparations for the two hour 40 minute race, July the 4th, Saturday night out on the road circuit at Daytona. We'll cover that live for you on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV. Let's refresh your memory. Qualifying completed what about 10 minutes ago Rodrigo Fluka back on pole position for Ford the man from Peru on pole with Jesse Cron alongside him Nicky Katzberg second in the championship at the moment a win here would set his championship challenge up massively he's got his teammate John Edwards with Richard Highstand behind him as well and Robbie Foley lots of BMWs on the first three rows where's Bruno Spengler answer is on the outside of row four that's at least a couple of positions I'm sure further back than he would like to be and he's got fast starting and uncompromising Shane Van Gisbergen right up his tailpipes as he comes to the green flag. Lawrence Vanzo is the best of the Porsches down in 10th uh, position, ninth position, excuse me. Uh, Canapino and Gilles Gounon, that's the best two Ferraris on row seven. Then Albuquerque, Corey Lewis, Ben Waddell. He's been a man who has improved through this six race series so far Richard Westbrook rather further down on row 11 the outside of row 11 than he would like to be Gregory Lee Fuger uh, on row inside of row 12 welcome to the championship for him and Scott Hargrove is alongside and Matt Griffin has a Ferrari on the outside of row 13 the Irishman wanting to do a little better and that's a good qualifying for him uh, we've got Dakota Dickerson and Shinya Mishimi on row 14 Andrew Simrel and Riley Dickinson on row 15 just over halfway through the grid with Kenneth Murillo and James Vance together on 16. Misha Goikberg and Oriel Servia back on 17. Oriel not be happy with that. Aaron, Aaron Tealitz and Nick Bull. Well, I know Nick won't be happy with that and I don't think Aaron will either. Mason Felipe, Guy Cosmo in the bright orange Ferrari uh, further back uh, on the grid than he would like to be. Sorry, the, the bright orange Ford. Uh, Nico Rondé and Blake Mount. Daniel Dye and James Pesek in that purple number 40. We'll pick him out. Max Hanratty, Owen Trinkler, welcome to Team TGM. Former champions in the Michelin Pilot Challenge, of course. And Owen Trinkler sitting at home in Nashville. Hello to Jen and the family there. One of my favourite cities to go to in the States. Daniel Morad and Robert Wickens for FAF make up our field this evening let's quickly before we go to the grid remind you of the championship situation 
and here's what has to happen. It's two BMW drivers at the sharp end of the field. This is the best four of five scores at the moment. It's a nine point gap from Spengler to Katzberg. Koch, Kenton Cook and uh, Philip Eng not here this weekend, so will not improve their position. Shinya Mishimi, therefore, with a great chance of getting up in the third position. But it's all about the two BMW drivers. Here's how we'll score it. A win in IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship scores 35. And that's exactly how many points we award here. Then it's 32, 30, 28, 26. It's the best five of six of the races. Bruno Spengler then, at the moment, drops his middle Ohio sixth position. That's his worst finish of the season. 28th. Nicky Katzberg, last time out at VIR, had a bit of a nightmare and he'll be delighted to see that finish disappear. So what does that mean for the championship? Who has to do what to whom? Well, for Katzberg, it's pretty easy. He's pretty much got to finish first or second. If he gets to the front of the field and Spengler is sixth or lower, Katzberg wins. Spengler wins. If he's fourth or higher, he'll take that on points completely. If he finished fifth, and Katzberg wins, then it's a tie on points, but Spengler still wins because he's got a better finishing record, two firsts and two seconds against two firsts, a second and a third for Katzberg. And after that, start looking for a fifth, a five place differential. But don't forget, Spengler's worst drop score is a sixth. So he'd have to go a long way down to have a problem. A Porsche keys to the race. Smart start, smart race. Ben Constant Juris. This is a tight start in a tight starting third to the lap, and it's a side by side start going up through the uphill S's, which is where the Porsche safety car is right now. You do not want to get tangled up early on. It's a short sprint to the first corner. It's a fast first corner. Uh, there is a bit of runoff on the outside, but once you've got through that, it is very much uh, line astern through uh, three and four. And then, really, you can't be overtaking going into the inner loop either, or the outer loop. So the first opportunity is all the way through at turn six, halfway through the lap. And you've got to pick those passes carefully, Nick. I, I could have said, I could have made it beautifully alliterative and pick be patient, pick your passes perfectly, is what I was I was going to say. Yeah, I mean, it is, as, as Ben alluded to, there's a lot of this which is one line only and even difficult to force a mistake. There are a couple of places where you can go for it um, in, in through the boot system. Certainly there's a chance if you get a really good run into corner one, but even that's not necessarily cambered for your favour. And, you know, it is a point, there is not a lot of hard braking, so the outbraking is, is not like to happen. So it's, we are going to see those things we love most of all, John, the two, three and four corner passes as they go side by side to get past, because that's the only way you can do it here. Yeah, you've got to set it up for a, for a very, very long way out. Ben, tactics here. We've seen in the previous five races, no tyres at Sebring, uh, two tyres or four tyres. Is this a hard track on tyres? It's a light coloured surface. It's not the resurfacing that was done a couple of seasons ago. Can we do a full race here without changing the Michelins? I'd be very surprised. There is a lot of medium to high speed turns, a lot of uh, pressure going through uh, the left side tyres. So I think at least two lefts will be needed. Uh, whether you need four tyres or two, Depends also when the caution falls. If it falls after the pit stops, then you really want to do a very quick stop. If you can get your stop done before the caution, maybe you go with the four. And the championship contenders, we've pointed them out. Everybody on this 40-odd car grid, Nick Damon, must know that it's Katzberg and Spengler fighting for the championship. You don't want to get into it with them. A nice... Uh, pleasant day with the track temperature around 100 degrees Fahrenheit so that's up into the 30s Celsius really nobody wants to get in the way of the championship battle here Nick no and I think certainly if you drive a BMW you'd be very much keen to get out of their way perhaps if you drive a different manufacturer's car this is your chance to put one over them because you can be way more aggressive than they can be and I'm thinking you look at you Shane Van Gisberg well Van Gisberg has been very good at the end of the races Ben Constant Juris will be watching the pits for us and making sure we don't miss any of the action uh, in the back of the field. He's got his eye racing set up in the French Alps. Nick Damon and John Hindorf joining him and you in the Haggerty Global uh, Broadcast Centre as we get the green flag in the final race of IMSA Eye Racing Pro Invitational 2020. 
is underway. Watch out for that bright red number seven going down towards the first corner. What Spengler cannot afford here is a charge back through the field as Robbie oh. Foley goes very wide indeed and in the Spengler. yellow and blue car. Oh. oh! Now, that was Spengler. That was Spengler. Spengler has had a huge, huge incident and there's all kinds, just what we said in the Porsche keys to the race. I paused for a moment because I wasn't sure if that was Spengler. But you a smart start, smart race. And Spengler's had a huge one. Ben Constantinus, has he has he quit back to the pits with a tour? Absolutely needed to quit back. The car absolutely destroyed. So it'll be two minutes of him sitting in pit lane. He'll then be able to use his fast car. Oh, oh and another car in the wall. And that Nick wasn't... Katzberg has survived. That Correct. Was, that was Jesse Cron who's Correct. going in there. So Katzberg, he, he, he hasn't gained a position because John Edwards has taken it back. But up the inside, so Katzberg now picks up second. This has been a perfect lap for Katzberg. Spengler gone. He's in second and only Fluker ahead of him. And Nicky Katzberg is now, he must be getting told by his team that what has happened to his championship contender, exactly as we talked about the Porsche keys to the race during Michelin counts down to green. And at the start of our race programme here, smart start, smart race, Spengler gets tied up with an accident up the S's. We've seen that in real life in the IMSA development series and, of course, in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship in recent years here at Watkins Glen International. And it has been a, well, a topsy-turvy. We've turned the championship upside down. A Spengler went upside down in the early laps. Watch the number seven. The first of those two red BMWs going through the first corner. We've got a couple of Fords going wide. Oh, ah. he got poleaxed by the blue Ford. Yeah. Which is a 27, was that? It, it was... Well, it was he. It, he was not at fault. Is what I'm going to say there no. immediately. It was Richard Highstand. It was Richard Highstand uh, in the number eleven, the GRT oh. Grasso Racing <laughs> Ford. Well, I sight. Uh, and put your glasses on, Nick. <laughs> uh, and uh, Ben's just spooled back through to make sure that we caught the right car. Thank you, Ben, for that. And that is what we were talking about. And Ben Constantinus, that comes from Spengler the beam two, three, maybe even four positions further back down the track at the start that he would have liked to have been. He was half a second away from pole position and that's why he was in that area of the track and got caught up in that accident, simple as. Absolutely, the qualifying dictated his start position. It wasn't great and, you know, he was still at the head of the field. There was more drama further back with more cars facing the wrong direction. Actually, we've got quite a few. Richard Highstand has just driven back to the pits after that contact. But it's pretty much taken him uh, two laps to do it. So whilst he hasn't needed to use a toe, he's losing just as much time. There is Spengler still waiting to be released from it. And he's, he's not happy, there Ben. Two, two minutes and 55 seconds he's been stationary in pit lane. He is not a happy man. We know that he's fairly impassive behind the wheel. He's worked so hard, Nick Damon, on his uh, virtual racing skills. We've seen him at the Nürburgring in the 24 hours in the DNLS race. We'll see him there again on Saturday when Bruce Jones uh, joins me on the RSL Network. That championship about halfway through its season. And we've seen him dominate for the most part here in the IMSA iRacing Pro Invitational. We don't often see much in terms of emotion from him. But you can see there, even though he's... <laughs> He looks relatively impassive. To me, he looks like he's boiling up. Yeah, well, I mean, we've, we've all been there, and it's, it's the same in, uh, in in full metal racing is in virtual racing, is that sometimes you're the innocent bystander in some of those accidents. Katzberg drops down to third there. as has right. got a great run up the hill. And Katzberg can wait to worry about things till after the full course yellow, competition yellow, sorry. And it's, it's what happened to Spengler, has happened to all of us, either on the racetrack for real or on the racetrack for virtually, where someone else's mistake wipes you out. Let's have another look back at what happened uh, to Bruno. On board with him, he gets in the first corner pretty well. High stand's gone wide, so has Robbie Foley. And High stand just spears across the front of him. And then he gets picked up by another one of the Fords. So if it wasn't bad enough that he got clipped by High stand returning, there was another heavy hit by a Ford which flicked him up in the air. That sort of, that wedge nose of the Ford GT just flicked the yeah. spinning BMW through the air and that's serious, serious damage, and that's going to take a lot of time. Ben's going to keep an eye on that and tell us when he gets back on track. 
Uh, he is, John. He's already gone out on track. He's back. Three minutes and six seconds in pit lane, but he's back out. I just wanted to highlight another thing about that accident. Uh, Richard Heistand was obviously the thord that caused the collision, but he had Robbie Foley to his outside. Correct. Foley was trying to get back onto track. So the Ford was effectively being squeezed and probably wouldn't have had that much warning from his virtual spotter that there was a car to his right because there was momentum with uh, uh, with uh, Bruno Spengler and he was closing so quickly that just a racing incident and so unlucky. I'm not, I'm not sure that, that Highstand was in control as he came did, back on, actually. Did, it looks like Was there coming in together that. between Foley and Highstand? No, no I don't think so. Because Foley was coming back onto the side as uh, we see Spengler now going through the... Uh, the inner loop and now the outer loop, but he's only a couple of laps back and it's, his car looks fully repaired, so he may be up to speed, but there's just no way, barring some ridiculous combination, he's going to get anywhere near the top six. It's now well, down to him to hope that Nicky Katzberg uh, fight for the first fails. He's, he's got, he's basically got to do something spectacular to get the laps back, hasn't he? He's in 40, he's running in 41st position. Uh, he's running uh, fully well, just over a lap down. He's almost two laps, two full laps down at the moment. And his championship challenge has evaporated at the exit of the first corner. Extraordinary stuff that we're seeing here in the Conic and Minolta presents IMSA iRacing at the Glen for the final round of our series. Ferrari on Ford. Uh, that it is the, uh, that is the Michelin uh, liveried car going down the inside of the uh, number 40 which is James Pesek and that was a pass for position ahead of them uh, is Lawrence Vanter who started just outside the top 10 uh, and he'll be delighted Running with that ninth. qualifying and he's inside the top 10 now at ninth position and let's not forget that um, we have a drop score so uh, Bruno Spengler will be dropping this score and therefore Correct. Is it a sixth position that he has as his lowest score will now count. Uh, so basically, Katzberg still has to do some work. He still has to win. Yeah, Kat Katzberg still, I think, has to win this uh, on count back. That's how it's going to uh, to work out. The finishes for Spengler that will count now at this point will be first, first, second, second, and sixth if he gets no better than how he is at the moment which, um, if my memory serves, gives him 138 points, I think. I'll check that in a moment. Whereas Katzberg, at the moment, has a second, a third, a first, and a ninth. He could add a, f and a 28th. He'll want to drop that 28th. So the first position here is super important for Katzberg. But what he's not got to do, Nick Damon, is throw that away now, getting overly excited where it's going to count is in the last 15, 20 minutes of this race. Exactly. He's got to work out, you know, first of all, what his pit stop strategy is on tyres and, uh, and when to take the stop. And then he's really got to work out what happens. It's a big variable when we have the full course course, when we have the competition yellow. Because at that point, everyone we've bunched up again, so he's in third, he'll be, you know, a few tenths of a second behind. Because it's Rodrigo Fluger is 3.6 seconds ahead of John Edwards, and then he Katzberg is actually four seconds behind the leader. That will disappear. That will disappear, and that's when he can make his attack. So is he going to save tyres, or is he going to take new tyres? It's all those thoughts which are going into his head about how he runs his first part of the race. But he needs to be in the position to have the car in perfect health, him ready to go, the setup working perfectly, for him to push in those last 15, 20 minutes. And John, um, Nicky Katzberg has lost a position on that last lap. Dropped Another behind one. John Edwards. Yeah, that, that happened the last before. Yeah, that, 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 that happened the yeah. last before, that before going into the... The bus stop, exactly what we're seeing now with Foley and the BMW teammate, the number 25, uh, alongside him of Conor de Filippi. Oh, Filippi's round the outside going into the inner loop. That's extremely fast there. Yeah, he, and had, he had to be allowed to do that because otherwise he'd have wiped the front off Foley's car. So uh, Conor was, uh, was uh, certainly aggressive. As Shane Van Gisbergen now comes to uh, up the uh, behind of the 96 car Foley as well. So Van Gisbergen looking to pick up that top six position. Yeah, it's extremely quick into that inner loop and the curbs are super flat. You could really, what I call touring car, those curbs. You nail all of those curbs. You don't hit the second one, the, the first of the left-handers. You go wide from that and then straighten the car up and straight line the exit. Um, I, I reckon, um, I was slightly wrong with that, Bruno Spengler sits on 100 
and 53 points if he gets no better than sixth position at the moment. 153 uh, at the moment. Now, um, at the moment, Katzberg, his best five scores would give him 122, but he's going to drop that 28 and replace that with something a little bit better. So he's got to be uh, right up in the first or second places to give Spengler a go here. And we'll keep, uh, as I said before, I've got fingers, toes, abacus all out at the moment, but we'll keep you up to date with that as we go on. Robbie Foley in the 96 turn of BMW, the man who's been doing a lot of testing in the new BMW M4 GT4. BMW, as a manufacturer in uh, in full metal racing, very unusual. Their GT Le Mans, GT3 and GT4 customer racing options all built on different platforms with the uh, M8 for GT Le Mans, as we're seeing here, uh, the M6 for GT3 and, of course, the BMW M4 for GT4. That's quite unusual, Nick. Most manufacturers try to put them on the same platform and, and either backwards engineer one or upwards engineer another. We see that with Mercedes, with Audi and a couple of other manufacturers, Aston Martin too and Ferrari. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, the BMW have a kind of a scattergun approach. Don't forget they were one of the original uh, GT3 manufacturers, one of the early GT3 manufacturers with the BMW Z4, which was one of the early successful um, machines. We, uh, certainly, for uh, example, the uh, Dubai 24 hours. And in fact, still very competitive in iRacing, where it's been bopped up to modern uh, standards and it's uh, competitive with all the other GT3s uh, that are new, like the Mercedes AMG GT3, the, uh, the Ferrari and the Audi, which are available on iRacing. But in the GTE class, yeah, the, the uh, BMW is a, is a strange fish in that they, they have so many options of what to race. And of course, much like of course, in the real world, the BMW M8 does present a bigger footprint of a car, which means it, it suits certain tracks better than others. It's not quite on high speed tracks. It's got a big amount of uh, brick to push for the air, yeah. but it also has a very good wide track. It's a bit of a, bit of a, a slight glance against the uh, barrier it's seen there. Coming out of the final corner. That's the battle for fourth position with Conor de Filippi. Uh, Nicky Katzberg. Oh, and he's gone wide. And he goes wide. That was kind of Felipe who went wide then, wasn't it? Uh, no, I think that was a lapped car, Nick. Ah. Uh, meanwhile, further back down the field, the number three zero is Michael Cooper. Sorry, I thought that was uh, that was Pesek earlier on, but that's the uh, the thirty Michael Cooper who has qualified through uh, via his uh, championship run in the uh, the Challenge IMSA series and going on with a rather damaged. Ferrari after qualifying just outside the top 10. Uh, a fantastic run for the Michelin liveried Ferrari. Looking uh, at the train behind him, John, he's obviously still got his straight line speed thanks to that slippery Ferrari, but he's that little bit of damage. He's taking a little right, bit of yeah. edge off the performance, hence the reason he's got a truly train behind him to give you a nice mid, mid noughties uh, F1 reference. He's got himself out the front, but people can't get past him because the one place he might better get past him on the straight, he's got enough straight line speed, but not enough cornering, and it's just backing up, backing up, backing up. And this is the point where drivers have to start thinking about. Do we go early? Do we pit early? Do we do the undercut? That's a real theory when you get stuck behind cars like this. problem with that is if you know a competition yellow is going to come at some stage, you put yourself in a position to lose a lap. Coming downhill then. And that braking area at the end of the Grand Prix loop and now through to turn nine, just over the top of the brow and that corner just tightens a little bit. The 89 car has certainly been in the wars. He's been. Uh, What's going on? Someone's gone up his, um, his, his rear. It looks like twice, one on one on each side. On the whole, if you've you been bashed at the back, it isn't your fault, John. Not always, well, but well, on the whole. Well, well, <laughs> I doubt people are going to break test in this race. Well, I was going to say yes, unless you were on very cold tyres. Massive defence by Gunon, who's trying to hold on to 10th position, coming down to the first corner with the trainer cars round the outside. That's Michael Cooper, who's both got ahead for a moment, wide. and then both go wide. Track limits there, for sure. In behind them, the bright red car uh, is Billy Albuquerque for Ford then Corey Lewis for Porsche, then Tristan Nunez for the 77 Mazda Sport machine. Uh, just another Ford further back, and alongside him is Trenton Estep and Ben Waddell, three Fords together there, then Matt Bell in the BMW M8. And Richard oh, Westbrook, Albuquerque's, oh, gone. Albuquerque's gone he in the wheel of the car. a little bit of a touch on the back of the other Ford, and that was it. the purple Ford held his line, and it was enough to put uh, Albuquerque off Michael. there. That the was end. Michael Cooper that Nick was talking about there, held, held his line doesn't seem to have damaged that car, aerated 
I rating and license for that purple car and at the moment Gilles Gounon fighting a rear guard action ahead of him I'm trying to work out that must be that is a lapped car ahead of him because the next car on the timing screen is Lawrence Vanto and that is not a Porsche no. ahead of him that's and a blue BMW a and, yeah it's the, it's, 64, I think it? it's the 64 car of uh, Owen Trinkler from Team TGM Owen said lap or so down he had an early issue with that car he'll not be happy with that having finally managed to get an entry all of these events by the way have been massively oversubscribed by real world into drivers and their teams and there's been quite a bit of a battle to get into the teams I've certainly known that there's been uh, all kinds of horse trading trying to <laughs> to go on earlier on left hand Ooh. side of the screen was the replay where Albuquerque got, got uh, tipped around too much curb there into the sand trap as Cooper has now gone through and taken 10th and here comes the Porsche of Corey Lewis through up the uphill Hesses tries to have a look it's a super hard place to pass meanwhile further up the field uh, Robbie Foley Conor Philippe, Shane Van Gisbergen all battling I should have said Shane Van, v Shane Van Gisbergen who's sitting in sixth Robbie Foley in fifth in the blue and yellow Turner car and then the Red, Conor de Felici, number 25. Katzberg is ahead of them. What, some half a second and more ahead of this battle, which is uh, battling for fourth position. It's, it's stabilised at front, John. It's still just under four second lead for Rodrigo with, with the, uh, the four. John Edwards is sitting behind him by uh, uh, say about, about just under four seconds. And it's a second and a half back to Nicky Katzberg, which is that comfortable distance where you are relax you can you can pace yourself you're not putting yourself at any risk so for example if for some reason John made a mistake you wouldn't get caught up in that accident you've got a nice gap behind you as well of 2.3 seconds coming to Felipe who's also another BMW very very comfortable position for Nicky Katzberg in this early part of the race before the pit stops at IMSA Radio if you want to get in touch with us hello to Rich Walker who says this is awesome I can see why I'm camp in fact I can see my tent <laughs> on the back strip let's t take a full lap uh, around the circuit with Robbie Foley down towards the first corner ahead of him is Conor de Felipe downhill braking area then it bottoms out now it's flat out and you're just shifting on the shift lights fifth starting to climb up the hill but the revs are still building might just snatch sixth here as he gets across the rise he's right on the limit and doesn't take take sixth gear he's got a lovely run on the BMW ahead of him he's put himself on driver's right which is the wrong side for the right-handed entry to the inner loop and he can't get that down to fourth gear in the middle of the corner straighten it up into the outer loop just hold fourth gear balance balance throttle you should be snatching fifth as you hit the curb on the exit which is exactly what Robbie does down into the downhill break for the left hand I think this is a tricky corner because it's sort of tightens up on you then back on the accelerator uphill right-hander coming into the boot now Nick doesn't like this corner I love it it's super late braking with this configuration of the track and the old concrete section you use the old concrete to turn you into that and that's the key to that corner now over the right difficult to spot your braking point here yes. as you come down to the next right hander and you're coming back to the end of the Grand Prix loop now turn nine also a little bit of a tricky one the left hander that takes you back towards the start finish line and that again is just over the brow easy to get on the throttle too early and you run out of room really quickly there now next corner turn 10 all about momentum try and stay off the curb on the inside but you can run wide but you've got to drag the car back to the left hand side because you're coming through the final corner fourth gear run it all the way out to the wall and get on the throttle as quick as you can and that was a lap around Watkins Glen International in one minute 44.2 seconds courtesy of Robbie Foley and John, we were looking on board there and you saw he had a, a whole a dashboard full of zeros. That's not what uh, he'll be seeing himself. Robbie will be seeing a lot of information which isn't shown on the onboard. It's obviously that's information that other teams would gather. He has information on the tyre pressures. He has information on how much fuel is left. He's got information on his uh, uh, sector times. He knows he knows how he's doing against his, his target time of the lap. He also has uh, the ability to adjust his... Um, his traction control, no ABS on these, on these GTs, of course. We do have traction control. He has a throttle curve he can adjust. There's a lot of on-screen adjustments, which are all illustrated there for the driver, but not for us observing over his shoulder on an onboard shot. Because that is effectively proprietary information. Right, back down through the field. 
and all kinds of battles are going on. Don't forget Bruno Spengler, championship leader. Early issue for Spengler, still sits in 41st position and he's eight and a half seconds away from 40th, which is Nick Bull in the similar M8 GTE. Ben Constantinus is watching the pits for us. Been relatively quiet, but there were obviously with more people involved. Owen Trinkler, I think, was involved in that first lap schmozzle uh, as well, Ben, uh, as the championship leader, Bruno Spengler. We had 10 cars visit the pit lane since the start of the race, uh, some with up to eight and a half minutes worth of work in the pits. Maxwell Har Hanratty, another nickel, as you say, Nicholas Bull, Guy Cosmo, Nico Rondo, uh, and uh, others as well. So plenty of chaos in the first couple of laps. Uh, the beauty of uh, my view for my racing is inside the game is I can choose whichever car I want to watch. I can choose whichever angle I want to watch. And I've been following Nicky Katzberg, who has managed to get past and clear John Edwards. John just had a slow uphill uh, through three and four. Katzberg got close enough and uh, slipstreamed his way past. But crucially now has set off and disappeared. So he's not towing John mm. Edwards any longer, although the gap is 5.1 seconds to our leader. Uh, and let's take a Mazda race rundown as we look through the field here uh, with still uh, an hour and let's call it nine minutes to go. We started with 90 minutes uh, on the clock. We haven't seen Rodrigo Fluke, a pole sitter, for quite some time, but the number 47, the black, red and white Ford, is leading the race by a reasonable margin as we look at the Mazda race rundown. 5.4 seconds, Ford back to BMW in second place. At the moment, Nicky Katzberg is five seconds away from winning the championship. If you want to look at it that way, the number 10 car has around about seven tenths of a second on his teammate John Edwards in the 23 who runs in his wheel tracks. And I would think he will not be putting too much pressure on Katzberg at the moment. It's another BMW works car in fourth position because behind the 23 of John Edwards is Conor de Filippi in the number 25. That's another one of the red cars. He's another two seconds further back in fifth position. Then the first of the Porsches and it's Shane van Gisbergen, the Kiwi running for, excuse me, apologies, in fifth position it's now Robbie Foley in the 96 BMW. That is the privateer entered the uh, Porsche, Porsche, excuse me, the Turner BMW. Then it's Van Gisbergen in sixth. He's made up four positions through all of that carnage. Augustin Canapino is in seventh in the 66 Ferrari in the Juncos colours. Again, showing that the Ferrari, well, in his hands at least, has got the pace to run inside, comfortably inside, the top 10. Lawrence Vanto has the works portion of a 912 in eighth position. Lawrence has been working very hard on his sim racing and wanted to do the last race of the season here in the IMSA Pro Series. Ninth position for Kyle Masson. That's his best run of the season so far. The number 38 Ford at GT for Performance Tech Motorsports. And in 10th position, rounding off the top 10, the man who's qualified through from his uh, runs in the Challenge uh, Series, Michael Cooper, the number 30, in that uh, very distinctive, shall we say, coloured Porsche uh, in that bright purple. That's your top 10. That's your Mazda race rundown. Fluke elites it by 5.2 seconds. And it is a case where it looks like Nicky Katzberg has kind of slightly pulled the pin. As Ben sees, he's tried to break the toe, so he doesn't want John Edwards hanging on his tail. Much, I think, is it's... The real reason, I think, that, they, that he's trying to get a gap is in case he makes a minor mistake and gets, perhaps gets his tail out, he doesn't then get collected by John, uh, you know, immediately following too closely. He also just want to make it too easy for him to catch back up again. Uh, Fluker, 5.1 seconds ahead. Katzberg, uh, from Katzberg. Edwards back a further 6, 10, 5.7. Then Conor de Felipe in another BMW, back 2.7. And then 8.3 seconds off, 8.8 .8 seconds off the lead. Very close to Conor, Robbie Foley, for another BMW. We can see Robbie through the winner, through the windscreen. It's a pretty decent battle going on just outside the top 10 as well with Ben Waddell, Matt Bell and Richard Westbrook running. Actually, Richard's just dropped off the back a little bit. So it's Tristan Nunes, Ben Waddell and Matt Bell. That's the 77 car in 14th position as it's all getting a bit exciting uh, further up as well. Look at that. <laughs> 
with Robbie Foley for a moment alongside the number 25 of comedy for lately with Shane Van Gisbergen deciding uh, unusually for Shane yes, the discretion I, was better part of honour that's it he had a good old think he's in the middle and so he went this is not going to work out well <laughs> whatever happens here uh, it's rather he, really it was, it was which car he was going to take with him so he just eased back off what, what do we know though then uh, about Van Gisbergen is that he is supreme at having pace in the car towards the last you know 25 30 minutes of the race and frankly after we've had a competition caution that's when it counts and van gisbergen's been brilliant at that so far yeah we spoke about this last uh, race to kind of preserve yourself until that last blast because there's no point building a massive advantage now you know that the caution is going to come and squeeze the field up so okay fluker has got 5.2 second advantage right now but casper won't be worried about that because he'll know that that was Martina up under the caution. Then just make sure your car is as good as possible after the caution and then set about fighting. So this is why I think we're seeing this very, very close battle, but only passing when a mistake is made. 43-9 last time around by the leader. 43-9 last time around by the 41st position car, the number seven of Bruno Spengler. So Spengler's car, Nick, has got pace. Uh, and he's sitting just on the end, I reckon, uh, of the lead lap. Well, he's on lap 40. Yes, just on the end of the lead lap. As once again, Foley tries round the outside into the inner loop. Driver's left. He's not going to get that done. He's got to get to the other side of the track earlier. Up the run from the uphill S's. Oh, now, though, the BMW in front of him has got a little wide coming out of the outer loop. Now it's side by side at the downhill left hander at turn six. And they're still side by side, exactly as Nick Damon said when we were talking about the Porsche keys to the race. Three, four corners. You're going to have to plan this out into the boot. Uphill, right hander, and here comes Van Gisberg, and he's picked his, picked his time to pick the pass. Will he be able to drag through behind Robbie Foley as they go into the right hander at turn eight, the other end of the boot? And, well, Foley's got through, but Van Gisberg, and again, been very sensible, Nick. Yeah, three or four corner pass. It was kind of built really on the, the error that uh, that Connor made coming out and going through the outer loop and switching back before going down the chute into the boot. Um, nice move, though, by uh, Robbie Foley. Fair, just held his line and eventually the corners came to him and he had the inside line. Shane Van Gisbergen almost managed to get the uh, the run through and follow him back, but again, just that half car, not far enough. But nope, I'll back, back off and see what happens next. So, uh, very well driven a couple of corners so it was fired by a mistake from Cardiff Felipe would be upset about but now he is the person with the uh, with the drag with the stitch up the hill and can he get Foley back again or will Van Gisbergen now go for it because there isn't a car two cars ahead and there's just one let's find out two corners to go up through the uphill S's into sixth gear just before the brow of the hill Van Gisbergen just dropped his right hand side Michelin's off onto the dirt he's got a good run he's in the hole in the air being made by Connor de Felipe's BMW but he doesn't get anywhere near dragging past there and these three remember are battling for fourth position the blue and yellow Turner car in fourth the red BMW in fifth that's Felipe and Van Gisbergen in the multicoloured but let's call it the yellow fronted car that's a Ian Vassar Sullivan ended car we've seen in Vassar Sullivan with as many as uh, five different cars and three different manufacturers in previous races. Three manufacturers in the same race and down the inside at the outer loop for, excuse me, at the toe of the boot for Van Gisbergen. That was a cheeky little manoeuvre. Couldn't quite get to the apex of that uphill right-hander. You can do a block pass there if you go in there and claim the inside line. Van Gisbergen tried it, but I've got to say Felipe was very, very late on the brakes there. With these three cars so close, I mean, it is a possibility that Van Gisbergen could be being exceptionally clever and doing some fuel save, John. If he saves some fuel, because he's obviously in the slipstream, he's using less, a bit of lift and coast, you can save anything up to 6% of your fuel a lap, which adds up pretty quickly to a couple of seconds less of fuel filled during your stop, which is all you need to hop these, the, the car ahead of you. So he may be looking to get a bit of track position by using uh, less fuel. Just a, a quick note for a few people further down the top 20. Matt Bell's had a decent run. He's up to 16th position in Rebel Rock Racing, number 71. Now, there is the current points leader, Nicky Katzberg, second place. And with a sixth place finish being the best 
that Spengler can take through as his fifth score out of six with him sitting down in 41st position at the moment that will be enough for him to take the championship he'll sit in second position or first position rather ahead of Bruno Spengler who is actually now up to 39th he's made a couple of places on the last lap he's got ahead of he was catching Nick Bull wasn't he and uh, Nick Bull's gone ahead of Blake Mount and Spengler's gone ahead of the pair of them so 16 seconds up the road is Guy Cosmo I think what Spengler's got to do here and I'll be interested to hear what you guys think of this and uh, those of you watching at him's the radio Spengler's got to hit the pits the very very moment that he thinks he can make it to the end and then stay out when the full cup course competition caution comes and try and get his lap back there's no wave buys here so it makes it a little bit more difficult but he's got to nick try and get that track position so tactics wise he's got to do something differently yeah i mean he's, he's sitting with a three minute penalty um, from the first lap instance and so he is suffering badly on that front it, it really is now clutching at straws he needs some a few things to come his way and he needs to uh, find the you say the competition caution for the right point after his immediately after his pit stop really uh van Giesbergen has fans Giesbergen just pitted I've no no he's just going across the line okay sorry um, quick thing I don't, want to, I don't want to argue with our caption but I don't believe that Nicky Katzberg is leading the championship really he needs to win he's only on he's on 119 plus 32 points which is 151 and Bruno Spengler well it's not 100 uh, and Oh, you, you're taking his best four his best four is 122 minus three the three got for VR is 119 yeah. So 119 plus 32 is 51, and Spengler's on 53. He needs to win. Right, OK. Because there's no other score to drop now from no. Spengler. That would be yeah. his score. OK. We have seen the first of our stops. Richard Westbrook coming in a few laps ago, followed by Matt Griffin. Westy did a 32.3 second stop. Um, Matt Griffin did a 46. I didn't catch Westy's uh, full stop, so I don't know what he did with tyres, but Griffin certainly went all full. Matt Griffin, who's been working really hard, uh, has even tried to... He's updated his... Uh, he's updated his monitor to get a uh, less latency rate. He's got a quicker refresh, trying to help things out. Uh, Spengler trying to stay ahead of Nicky Katzberg here. These are the two cars battling for the championship. Now, Fluke has already gone through the leader of the race. And this is not bad tactics, actually, from Spengler. He because been... he's putting time in, into Fluke. Fluke is building up a lead on Katzberg at the moment. Yeah, it's not it's not really cricket, though, is it? You are He's about to be lapped for the second time. And um, you need to let the driver go. I mean, it's, yes, it's a championship. Yes, it's, it's your teammate. You should be letting him go. There's a blue flag in the top left corner of your screen. You know he's there. You know what's going on. But I suppose, you know, they are teammates. They can have a chat about it later. But this is not what should happen, really, in a, uh, a fair fight. Well, flashing of the lights now by Katzberg. He miles now faster. And he, he <laughs> yes, absolutely. Gives you 40 horsepower, that. Tries to go around the outside into the inner loop. Sitting in behind John Edwards. It was a 44-2 last time for Katzberg. Fluke did a... 43-7, so half a second lost to the leader, and the gap is now seven and a half seconds. Remember, competition caution still to come. Behind them, Foley, De Filippi, and Shane van Gisbergen, BMW, BMW, uh, and Porsche for fourth, fifth, and sixth, still scrapping it out. Yeah, I mean, it, it is as close as it can be amongst these these two sets of three we have. Of course, Spengler, of course, is actually about to go two laps down. The second back, I'll hear this Foley, Di Filippi, and Van Gisbergen and fight. All of this, of course, really is a kind of a, a kind of a, an aperitif, isn't it, to the, to the major of events we will see once we've got through the pit stop and the competition yellow, when they're all unleashed for that final few minutes, the final half hour, when they aren't holding back for any reason. More pit stops as one or two of the lower runners dive into the pit lane Mason Felipe in the 98 Ferrari that uh, light blue car coming in James French in the Ford number 45 in uh, as well let's remind you of our Porsche keys to the race we've got 55 minutes to go you can get to the end on a tank of fuel and a new set of Michelins from here we said start smart stay smart in our Porsche keys 
to the race and unfortunately for Bruno Spenger, the championship leader, that lasted for about one corner. It all went horribly wrong. Pick your passes, we said. And well, we've seen everybody playing fair at the moment. There's been precious little contact whilst overtaking has been going on. We've yet to see how the tyre strategy will play out. Two, four, none, who knows? And finally, the championship contenders and Richard Highstand got involved in the championship battle unknowingly, unwittingly, but certainly very, very much has affected Nicky, uh, Nicky Katzberg, although positively for Katzberg, negatively, of course, for Spengler. My feeling is that Spengler, who was looking quite impassive in that picture we saw uh, earlier, is absolutely livid, and he's now driving angry, because, of course, the reason he is two laps down is not his fault. It was yeah, the result of a kind of misunderstanding, a kerfuffle between uh, High Stand and, and Foley. But realistically, Bruno should let those cars through. But he's currently driving angry, driving well, because he's running at the pace and he's pretty premium at the pace. But, you know, these guys are two laps ahead. And, and I do get my kind of my purist hat on at this point and say, yeah, whatever, 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 you let them through. Well, Richard Westbrook, remember, Ben told us that he pitted a little while ago. I'm going to suggest he put tyres on. He's just in a 44-2 last time around he's down in 31st position uh, in the ford philip albuquerque's just in a 44-4 and fluker at the front of the field a 44-0 and then a 44-8 so they are quick and at the moment katzberg ben constant is being held up by bruno spengler yeah actually fluker's last lap was a 4-1 from fluker, but, uh, 44 8 from fluker 44-0 before that yeah Exactly, 44-0, and Katzberg is doing 44-8s and 44-6s. He is way, way faster, especially through the inner loop, and he catches right onto the tail through here, bouncing across the curves. He gains so much time, he's not quite close enough here, but then he tries to go down the inside of the outer loop, and there is no space to do it. There's just, he just, oh, now he peels off. That's interesting, he's finally peeled away. I wonder if he's been spoken to by the BMW Motorsport team. They take this very seriously indeed. They do have race engineers, and Nick, you, you, you can have voice communication or text communication, but certainly he, he may well have got quote-unquote a radio message there from the BMW engineering team. There's very little reason for him to block for two laps and then stop, and then someone said, um, yeah, you proved your point now, Bruno. We know you're quick. We know it's not your fault. Can you let him go? Because you're just causing a problem which could result in you know, uh, us looking very silly. I mean, you know, a BMW is going to win, but they want to win the correct way. And, you know, a Fluker v Katzberg fight will be for both the victory and for the championship. Yeah, agreed. Fluker, 7.1 seconds to the good. Lost eight-tenths of a second on the previous lap to the one before and remember these cars have not stopped at the sharp end of the field uh, and the first pit stop out by my reckoning is Scott Hargrove down in 25th position but we're seeing decent times for those who've put tyres on further back down the field including as I said Richard Westbrook uh, who did a 44-2 then a 44-5 so Westy lapping at the same sort of pace as the leaders with that uh, full tank of fuel to get to the end of the race, Nick. Yeah, I mean, the fresh tyres really do help the two or three laps, even even, even a pay, you've got a bit of extra um, uh, grip on them. And the, most, most of the cars do run very, very large amount of camber, John, so that you do kind of lose that inner edge relatively quickly over two or three laps. And so that's why often qualifying sets are quite a lot faster in my racing. Now, this is what I was hoping wasn't going to happen. The 53 and 54 car <laughs> running together. That's Riley Dick Inson and Dakota Dick Urson uh, in 53 and 54. Porsche and Ford together. A couple of uh, good young American drivers in the real world who have... Oh, and oh. a mistake for the 53, which is right. Shall I just say Riley? Was it would that, be was easier. Dakota, wasn't it? Uh, in 50... the Porsche Dakota, I'm not wrong. Uh, no, the, the Porsche's Riley okay. for the most speed. He's behind now. <laughs> yeah, the, the most speed um, sort of scratch marks, claw marks are over the front of the of the wheel arches, giving away most speed. A big Porsche exponent in the uh, GT3 Cup Challenge by IMSA. Remember, 
Ooh. Ford running without a front end there and peeling off into the pit. So this is the battle for fourth position going across the line. Under 50 minutes to go now. That was Guy Cosmo, I think, coming into the pits, followed in by the number 40, which I thought uh, was further up the field earlier on. The other purple uh, Ford, that's James Pesek. Uh, with a little bit of black on that car and already the nose being replaced on Guy Cosmo's car. Sven van Gisbergen is, is, is faking a lot. He's looking out, he's trying to unsettle um, Nardo Felipe, but I don't think he's actually that serious about going for a move to it. I think he's happily sitting in the slipstream, saving a bit of fuel, making Connor work for it. Obviously Connor makes a mistake or slip through, but he's, you know, he's, he's, he's moving left, he's moving right, he's just letting him know he's there, but a couple of times he could have had a half move, which he's not bothered with. No. So I think he's very happy where things are. I think he's got a confidence he can jump these two in the pit stops and then, of course, he'll get brought back up to the, to the leaders when we have the competition yellow. Uh, and in comes 48, the 48 Porsche, which is Corey Lewis for Paul Miller Racing. Hello, everybody, at Paul Miller Racing. Heard the news that they won't be in Florida for the full metal IMSA start to the season with the... Paul Revere 2 hour 40 effectively on July the 4th and the Sebring race we offer our best wishes to the Paul Miller team and all their connections and we hope to see them later on in the IMSA racing year here comes Van Gisberg in turn 9 gets the inside run there's a little touch as he pushes the BMW slightly wide but he's got the inside line to turn 10 and clears the number 25 of Conor de Filippi, that's Van Gisbergen, up into fifth place. Super move, got finally, a lovely run off yeah, eight. finally saw a slight... Oh, he's gone way too wide coming into the... Uh... And was that Filippi pitting there? Yes, Filippi's pitted. Yep. Uh, and also coming in Robbie Forley as well, Ben Constantiris. Yeah, four cars coming in. Look at that, most of the field coming in together there. A, a split strategy so far, a 45 second stop for many, and then some have done 35 second stops. As so that's saw two tyres of four. Oh, that... and Conor de Filippi's had to reverse backwards. He's missed his slot. So oh. that'll be a slow pit stop for him. Canapino uh, yes, came in, two... Vanto came in, and Michael Cooper came in. So that's six through to 11th, all in the pit. Sorry, Ben. Look, those, those times you were talking about, is that the difference between of uh, fuel and uh, four tyres of fuel and two tyres? I think it is. I think it's two tyres versus four tyres. So BMW at the back there dropping off the jacks and uh, firing away. Uh, that is going to update on my screen in just a second. Uh, but a lot of these guys going for the full 45 second stop by the looks of things. And of That's course, if you've got a bit of damage as well, the, uh, uh, the, the, that will take a little bit of time to repair. John Edwards, 45.3. Robbie Foley, 45-6. Conor de Filippi, 46-0. Canapino, 43-8. Uh, also, they've all gone four tyres at the moment. Van Thor, 47-6 as well. Um, so nobody going for the two tyres in that particular battle. John Edwards then, the first of the pit stoppers now, is down in 11th position and is a minute 11, call it a minute and 12, although getting up to speed, away from the leader who comes into the pit lane now with 46 minutes to go. So Nick is well inside the window to get to the end and he's pushed it pretty much as far as he can do. It's pretty much half distance, isn't they, it? They have literally cut the race in half. And it is, it is mostly because they probably have decided they're going to take four tyres as in comes the... Uh, the erstwhile second place and potential winner of the race and the championship, Nicky Katzberg, uh, from second place. He's stopping, and, and Shane Van Gisbergen also comes in from a scored third, though probably he won't come out in third, and Carl Masson from scored fourth. So, yeah, I mean, they've split it in half. They are probably, therefore, thinking about getting used to their boots on, and, of course, they're now just waiting for the competition yellow. Philippe Albuquerque, if he stays out, might just inherit the lead here in the 31. And remember, we saw him going the wrong way, and he has done. Uh, he was tipped around in the inner loop earlier on. So Philippe Albuquerque in the wheel and uh, red and white Ford GTE has gone through to the lead. And it's a bit of a what if for him. He's still got his pit stop to make. But remember, he was facing backwards in the inner loop while he was battling inside the top 10 earlier on. Yeah, got a little, uh, I think it was probably Foley, got a little touch on with Foley. And he just, unfortunately, as you can sometimes, you, it, weirdly, the physics sometimes sends a car off where you don't think it's going to do. The second place car spun off to the right but he's obviously he's net in the lead he's going to have to make a stop and it, but when they all queue back up again after safety car goes off he won't be that far in time but how many cars back he'll be in the queue well Rodrigo Fluger has come out ahead of Kyle Masson John Edwards Nicky Katzberg's dropped out to fifth in that pit stop 
shuffle. Ben Constanturis was watching the leaders in the pit lane. Albuquerque is 28 and a half seconds. He can't get in and out and put tyres on in that time. But if he only does fuel, he might be able to hold an advantage or jump some, some positions. What's Fluke, Besson, Edwards, Katzbergen and Van Gisbergen? What has their pit stops been in terms of two or four tyres that we talked about in the Porsche keys to the race, Ben? Well, Fluke was stopped for a long time, 47.7 seconds. But somehow he was five seconds faster through the full pit lane than Nicky Katzberg and John Edwards. I don't know how he's managed to do that. Uh, Katzberg with a 108.1, John Edwards with a 108.2, but crucially has had a much faster outlap and That's got four back tires. ahead of Nick Katzberg. They've all got four tyres on. Yeah. That's pretty clear. Kyle Masson is a surprise because he has only just... Uh, stopped by the looks of things, but he only stopped for 24 seconds. So that's fuel only. And so that's why he's got it. And the third. yellow's and out. The yellow's come out as well. Competition yellow as Philippe Albuquerque went into the pit lane. This is the competition yellow. And here comes Fluka, so he'll go back into the lead. Where is Albuquerque? He's still on the pit lane in the wheeling car. He, are they going to put tyres on that? He's, he's lost the lead. Oh, if he could have, you know, could he? They would have closed the pit lane, of course, he wouldn't have got in. So through has gone Fluke and Masson, Edwards, Katzberg. The Porsche safety car is out. And that was Spengler getting a lap back. Spengler's been waved by. So Spengler's got his lap at uh, one of his laps back. Now, has he stopped? And where's he got up to? He's up to 33rd position. And he will be back on the lead lap at the end of this lap, but he'll also pit stop. Uh, he has, let me see, where did I say he was? 33rd. Spengler has stopped twice, okay, so he has, he's going to get back on the end of the lead lap here, Nick, I reckon. Yeah, I mean, this is a, 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 the, the perfect result from as far as catching up, but it's still going to be the end of the lead lap is, you know, 28th, 30th place, and you've got to get past all those cars and up past sixth place. It's just not going to happen unless something amazing happens. So competition yellow is out. We have 42 and a half minutes to go. Just over half distance. The championship is on the line for Conning and Minolta presents IMSA iRacing at the Glen. Well, there are some cars who have not yet made their pit stops, notably Daniel Dye, who's up in 11th. And when the pit lane opens, surely he'll dive into the pit lane. But at the moment, Rodrigo Fluka leads from Masson, from Edwards, Nicky Katzberg, fourth position, best of the two championship contenders. But Spengler is now, I reckon, Nick Damon, back on the lead lap. Yep, it certainly is. He's back on the lead lap. He'll be back at the end of the queue. He will... He's fueled and tied to the end. He will rejoin in probably about 30... net 30 second when the final pit stopper happens. He'll drop behind them. So he just has to get past uh, at least 26 cars to make up a position. Um, the big loser out of that pit stop uh, cycle called Nicky Katzberg went from second to fourth. Carl Masson has not put on tyres, as Ben has told us, which means he's not going to be as quick. He has another Ford in front of him and therefore he will be holding them up probably. Now... Rodrigo Fluka, Ben, we've seen him being very good in qualifying, very good in the first half of the race. This is the first time we've seen him back at the front of the field after his pit stops. He struggled in the pit stops. He's taken longer in the pit stops sometimes uh, in terms of maybe not getting his pit or maybe getting damage repaired that he didn't need to. Hmm. So he's at the front of the field. Let's, let's go back to our championship scenario. We talked about this earlier on. For Katzberg, he needs to win this race and Spengler to be sixth or worse uh, with dropped scores playing into this at the moment. Uh, we've got 
a situation where Spengler's worst haul of points, Nick Damon, uh, you reckon, is, is what he's sitting on? Which is 153. It's the worst Thank he you. can get. It's 153. Okay. And currently, the Katzberg has 119 if you take away his VIR failure. Which was a 28th position. Yeah. So Spengler's only got a sixth to lose. So if he finishes lower than that, it's not going to make any difference. Katzberg can't afford to tie. He must win on points because if it's a tie, Spengler has two wins. And if uh, Katzberg, uh, even if he wins, his fourth best score is only a third, whereas Spengler's got two seconds to back up his two wins. So he must win this on points. We can't have a points tie if Katzberg is to win. If he wins and Spengler doesn't finish in the top six, he will win the championship by one point. 154 to 153. That's the only way he can win. Spengler not being in the top six, unless there's a massive accident by every single car from about position 7 to 17, is, is not going to happen. So it's now all about whether Katzberg can get past John Edwards, can get past Carl Masson, and by the time he got past both of those, if he can get anywhere near Rodrigo Flu, because my belief is with Masson on old tyres, he's going to be slowing them up. We know a slight speed disadvantage, whilst it enables Flu to get away, is still really hard to overtake John. Ben Edwards, thought from you as we're about to go green for the... Ben Edwards, Ben <laughs> Constantiris. A uh, quick thought from you as we're about to go green. Two Fords at the front of the field, one with new tyres, one without. Yeah, Fluka did a great job in the pit lane. Five seconds faster throughout the whole lane. How he did it, I can't see it. But certainly, Carmason has not changed tyres. That's how he's jumped up to second position. Not what Katzberg needed with four cars away from the lead. I thought he would come at, be in this caution period in second. He's now in fourth. He's got to pass two cars to get anywhere near Fluka. He doesn't want to let Fluka get away and start dominating like he did the first part of the race. Right, well, where, and we've got a lapped car in there as well. One of the AV uh, S in Vassar Sullivan. It's the 140 of Aaron Tealitz uh, in the BMW. He's sitting right in behind the leader so fluke has even got a little bit of a tail end charlie behind him the green flag is out there are 37 and a half minutes left of the IMSA iRacing Pro Invitational season for 2020 and Rodrigo Fluka is looking for his first victory on the season got plenty of pole positions he hasn't managed to convert them the championship battle sits behind him with Kyle Masson, John Edwards and Nicky Katzberg Ford, BMW and BMW Katzberg simple for him to win the championship by one point, he has to win this race. He's been good in the second half of the race and Fluger hasn't been good in the second half of the race in previous events. But we can't have, is John Edwards holding him up for too long? Into the inner loop then. And still, the Kyle Masson, red and black Ford, holding up the BMWs, but at least, well, uh, Van Giesbergen's made up a position there. He's got ahead of Robbie Foley in that uh, pit stop cycle and he's got Katzberg as well he goes past Katzberg that's terrible news for the championship leader Ben yeah absolutely there was a nice move Katzberg was a bit squirrely on the outer loop and he may even lose a position here uh, to Robbie Foley in the background and Foley's going to get at least the inside there but uh, it's all a bit complicated right now Heading. Sorry, Nick, go Katzberg's ahead. Katzberg's got back past Gavin Van Giesberg. The thing to remember, John, is they're back on cold tyres again because they came out of the pits on fresh tyres. They tootled around. They might have taken the shine off and that was it. But now they're trying to push hard on cold tyres. It's up the inside of... Um, is it... Carl That's Masson. Masson. Yeah, That's Masson. Uh, looking to get the inside of Masson there. And I'm not sure if he's going to make it or not there for to the uh, Katzberg. Corner. But Katzberg, they were moving to third behind Edwards and... A Van Giesberg has ran the outside. That's a brave manoeuvre. Good driving by Karl Masson. But you can see, even in this early part of the running, he does not have the grip from centre oh. off the corners. Three wide across the start-finish line. Down the inside, the 25 BMW of Conor de Filippi. And Karl Masson from second down to seventh as Foley's gone through as well. Here comes Canapino in the green white and red machine and he's gone through so Masson now down to eighth and Lawrence Vanter is sniffing around the back or at least he will be shortly he's the next car further back so Masson really struggling for grip even in this early running 
as we've gone back to green. I think it just goes to show that the, uh, the way to go was, was four tyres, the two tyre strategy, which stuck him into second place. And obviously gave him probably seven or eight track positions. He's going to lose them much, much more quickly than that. And, and the other cars have all taken four tyres will slowly swallow him up. The new tyre, in fact, he spun off behind uh, Canapino there. So in fact, just off camera, was Masson. Masson span off and away. Looks like he's got some damage uh, as well. Now, Spengler has restarted and he's got damage on the nose of that car so there's been a little bit of bump and run he's up to 23rd position 1.8 seconds away from scott hargrove in a similar car ahead of him in 22nd but there's definitely some damage on the nose of that bmw now we say this every time but people are coming to the iRacing pro invitational the imsa iRacing pro invitational all the time as well damage on the car that we can see is bad because we can see it it's probably nick even worse for the driver because not all damage can be seen here yes it's a really good point there's, there's inv invisible damage you, you you clip something you think oh that's fine and then suddenly you find your steering wheel isn't quite straight or you've lost five miles now down the straight now actually that that lower fender sort of lower nose derangement that uh, Spengler had isn't always bad news. That could be a relatively sort of medium tap that's only slightly deranged. It won't be causing him too much trouble, but you don't know exactly how the computers calculated the accident he had. Matt Bell in the top 20 in the urban grid coloured Rebel Rock Racing 71 BMW, and he is chasing Kyle Masson. Masson down to 17th position, lost, remember. Uh, lost, remember, what, seven of those positions without falling off the track. The rest of them, Nick, because he's been into the into the green I, and into the... Oh, and there was a lot of... Going into the inner loop there, still a little uh, bit of tyre smoke. And that's another one of the Fords that was having trouble there. I think oh, that was James out. Pesek. The Masson sort of eased out the, uh, the Le Mans coloured Ford. That's uh, painted in very traditional Le Mans colours of the Ford GT. And Van Gisbergen's got past Katzberg, which is very bad news for uh, for Nicky. It's it just to do a, a, a positioning here. Rodrigo Fluker is leading by just a second from John Edwards in the BMW. And it's two seconds back to Shane Van Gisbergen, who is just a quarter of a second ahead of Nicky Katzberg. As two cars have had a massive right. incident there, including the number two, is that? That was the downhill left-hander after the short shoot. That's turn number six. Uh, and that was the Porsche of Nico Rondé. The Peregrine Racing Carbon Auto Works car. I'm pretty certain that blue yeah, car. Yeah, that was the two car, yep. And another car stuck in the barrier. And there was a way. Ford in there as well. It might have, was it Westbrook? It didn't look like Westbrook's colour. I was say it wasn't, though. It's that light blue colour car. Ah, no, it was James French. It was James French in the 45. Apologies. Van Gisbergen, fastest lap of the race last time around. Here it is again. SVG finds pace when he needs it. He's only three seconds away from the leader in the 97 Porsche 991 RSR and James Pesek's gone around and joins right oh! in front of one of the BMWs. That's the Invasa Sullivan car. Which already didn't have a bonnet and now it doesn't have a bonnet twice. Oh, that's a very, very untidy rejoin there. Katzberg down into fourth as Van Gisbergen is four tenths of a second away. Remember, by our rudimentary calculations, and by ours, I'm pointing the finger Thank at Nick you. Dearman. <laughs> um, <laughs> Katzberg has to win this race, even with Spengler all the way down the field on count back. He can't win it if the scores are tied, so he must win this race. Uh, and at the moment, it's going away from him, but there's still half an hour to go, and there's an ebb and flow. And the interesting thing we have learned, John, is about tyre degradation. Because Carl Masson had run his, his, his tyres for 45 minutes and they were shot compared to the new tyres. If you can save tyres, obviously you will have more speed at the end. So perhaps Nicky Katzberg at this point is thinking, right, I need to settle down. Van Gisbergen has got the pace for now, but I have a chance to come back. What was interesting about that, of course, is he'd been in the pits, he'd allowed the tyres to cool down and then give them the second shot. They didn't get the second heat heat cycle, if you will. Robert Wiggins up inside the top 30 in the Faf Porsche with the uh, plaid colours of the Canadian Lumber oh, Factory. Oh, and he, on bad camera, time to join him. <laughs> he's thrown the car off the circuit, throws his head back in disbelief. There was a little glance over when we went to him. I think he knew we were on board with him and it may have just taken his concentration for a moment. 
and he'll have to come into the pit lane while he fought his way up inside the top 30 after uh, a, a not great qualifying a non-scoring qualifying two off tracks no laps recorded correct absolutely right another fastest time for Shane van Gisbergen he's he's purpled the whole series again and gained about uh, four tenths a second the gap now to second place John Edwards is 1.2 seconds John. well John Edwards put his fastest lap of the race in last time around Ben Edwards is watching the times throughout the field Ben what do you got uh, yeah and then look at the times look how fast they are before we had the pit stops, they were we were doing 44 zeros if we were lucky. I think Katzberg was doing 44 eights in traffic. We're now the fastest lap of the race at 42 eight from Van Gisbergen. Way better, yeah. way faster on these tyres. Proving that they do degrade a lot, and they if you can preserve them and have some speed at the end of the race, as you were saying, John, it's going to be key. Well, take a look at the top 10 for you as we go through the race on the. Master race run down in a moment, but let's remind you of our Porsche keys to the race. In the Michelin countdown to green, and before the start of the race, we set this out. Smart start, smart race. That's not what happened for Bruno Spengler, and he's paying the price right now. Pick your passes. Well, actually, Nick Damon, the passes have been picked pretty much perfectly. We have not had incident when there has been side-by-side -side action. Yeah, we've seen those two, three, four corner passes, people p people waiting for their time, people waiting for the accident, not forcing that. We haven't seen the nudgy pass that we've seen in previous races. People actually waiting for someone to actually make a minor mistake and then do it at the inside. So great overtaking, not a great start for some of the drivers earlier, though. Uh, ben, two or four tyres. We've seen no tyres, but that didn't work for Kyle Masson. No, absolutely not. So it didn't work. Interesting to see uh, if uh, Richard Westbrook, who was another one who seemed to take less tyres uh, how he's getting on uh, but certainly by the looking at the times four tyres was the only really way to go and we talked about the championship contenders and getting involved well everybody's being fairly respectful of Nicky Katzberg and to be fair Richard Highstand who was involved with that incident in, uh, with Spengler on the first uh, exit in the first corner and uh, that certainly wasn't deliberate Highstand was having his own moment trying to get back on the track all right let's go through the field with our master race rundown rodrigo fluker from pole position by far his best race in the championship so far we've seen him on pole we've seen him lead we've not seen him come out after the pit stop with the kind of pace that he's got here the man from peru in the 47 leading out by not a comfortable margin but two seconds will do him for performance a uh, precision performance motorsport second for John Edwards for BMW, he's got just two tenths in that 23 car ahead of the charging 97 in Vassar Sullivan Porsche of Shane Van Gisbergen. Gizzy always very quick indeed at the last part of the race. Then it's another couple of BMWs. Championship contender Nicky Katzberg needs to find four seconds to get to the front of the field, but at the moment he's worried much more, I would think, about the three tenths that Robbie Foley for Turner Motorsport is sitting behind him. Another good run from the 96 team and Robbie Foley. Just outside the top five at six, it's another BMW, Conor De Filippi, in the number 25 car with a bit of space ahead of him and a bit of space back to the first of the Ferraris. Argentinian touring car champion, Augustin Canapino, has raced in IMSA in DPI for Juncos and has that number 66 in seventh position. He's only 6.2 seconds away from the lead. Three seconds further back, Lawrence Van Tour, second best to the Porsches and the only works driver from the Porsche GT team, is in eighth position in the 912. Rounding off uh, the top 10, Jules Gounon in the number 24 in ninth, the BMW. And behind him, Jules Gounon, another one of the Ferraris. Jules still, well, he had damaged car earlier on and he was fighting a bit of a rear guard action. Uh, it's still a little bit damaged, but not as bad as had it was a, earlier on. Repair during it. You can get a bit of a free repair during a four-tire stop. You only get nine or ten seconds. It's got a quite a generous repair model fitted into this particular championship. Some of the champions are quite quite cruel. You go off and hit a barrier and you've got 15 minutes of repairs. This one, it's a little bit more generous. Um, so he's had himself cleaned up and he'll be getting a nice, better aero balance. So nice to race run down for the top ten. Corey Lewis, Shinja Mishimi, Tristan Nunes, Riley Dickinson and Michael Cooper, the next five back. And back to Michael Cooper, still like 21 seconds away from the lead, so mistakes or any issues could be a problem. A fastest lap of the race, uh, 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 in second. second, sorry, a, a fastest lap of his race for Rodrigo Fluger. He's had to get a wiggle on, and the reason for that is Van Gisbergen is now starting to chase him down. And Bruno Spengler, on his 
right comeback drive from uh, 44th and dead last. He's now up to 17th. He's overtaken about eight cars since the restart. He's pushing hard, hoping for a massive accident in the midfield. But uh, at the moment, the work has been done by Shane Van Gisbergen and uh, Rodrigo Fluke because they are absolutely blocking the chance of Nicky Katzberg winning this race. And it won't matter where Bruno finishes if Nicky doesn't win. Yeah, very good. Spengler then, uh, he will know that he's got to keep putting pressure on uh, his points total at the moment. Remember, the championship is the best five of six championship finishes just to allow for anybody who perhaps didn't get six entries. They've all been oversubscribed. We can start a max maximum of 50 cars. I think the most we had was about 75 entries uh, in the uh, first couple of three races. And people caught onto this very quickly and it's been a real winner for IMSA and iRacing. Uh, we've said this before, but thanks very much indeed to Drew, Cisco and the rest of the team who've been our colleagues and kept us with great pictures and lots of information coming through my ears as well from the guys in Boston, Massachusetts at iRacing HQ. Down the inside for Scott Hargrove in the BMW, the green and black car. That's the uh, full torque gear sponsored machine. If you look carefully, you'll see a Radio Show Limited logo on there because they are clothing partners. The interesting thing, actually, just as a, a visual observation, is the um, the BMWs always look like BMWs, and the Ferraris look like Ferraris, and the Porsches all like Porsches. But depending how you paint the Fords, they can look completely different. It's certainly coming towards you. I was looking for what's oh, it's a Ford, but they painted the the nostrils differently, and they have different colours. The uh, black and uh, uh, red one uh, coming towards us it almost looks like it's got a nose shape like a LMP1 car Correct. a few years ago. Yeah, very really clever. weird. Very cleverly done, Andy Matt Blackmore renowned livery and graphic artist who in fact works with full talk gear and that's uh, black and green cars one of the eight designs he has uh, in the race he can give you chapter and verse about all of that he designs our t-shirts uh, as well and it's amazing when you hear andy talking we've had him on before in the past on imsa radio hopefully we'll get to see him at a track sometime this year talk about how you can use contrast colours and highlight colours to either hide the shape of a car or accentuate it and that's exactly what Nick's talking about. This is a nice run from Scott Hargrove who had an absolute heartbreak uh, in one of the earlier rounds when he was running a Porsche in fact, uh, that was at VIR and he was well inside the top 10 i think he was seven yeah. and the engine blew with a lap to go annoying bit of modeling there but you can blow your engines even though these cars do have um, uh, rev limiters on the them shift, it's still yeah. possible to blow your engine but often with over aggressive downshifts but it is quite rare but it has happened yeah but with a lap to go you've got to feel it wasn't well, your day engine was tired at that point you know you've done an <laughs> hour and 20 minutes work so at the front rodrigo fluke is just pulling away at three tenths faster than shane van gisberg in that time round who was actually this a little bit slower than john edwards who was uh sorry a little bit slower than nicky katzberg but, but the fact is those three are quite close together but rodrigo getting away john yeah but john edwards and nicky katzberg not the last lap but the one before put in their fastest laps of their races with 43 fours uh, uh, 43 3s and 43 2s so that that's very very decent pace but you've got to say Van Gisbergen with that 42.8 fastest lap of the race he's backing that up he's peppering the high 42s Ben Constantius and the high or, or the very low 43s rather and the high 42s Van Gisbergen an absolute model of consistency at the moment and clear track ahead of him as well so he's able to do that he's able to uh, not have to worry. They will come in contact soon with some of the tail end Charlies who have uh, been running as much as four seconds off the pace. Uh, so they will have traffic to contend with. And as we've seen at the very end of these races with that competition caution in the middle of the race, it's that when they catch those traffic right at the end, the last 10 minutes or so, that's when it becomes very, very squeaky bottom time, uh, trying to avoid all of the potential dra dramas. Um, I'm for those who don't understand the British colloquialism there, the England colloquialism, it means it's just going to get a bit scary uh, for <laughs> those drivers. There's a battle shaping up uh, between the number 25 sitting in sixth position, Conor de Filippi and the BMW and the Ferrari 488, the Juncos car of Augustin Canapino. Augustin again has 
really rather re-fired his sim racing career. He, he did do some sim racing um, some years ago before he went off racing in the real world. He's been exceptionally successful in his home uh, national series in Argentina. I think the national champion three times uh, in their premier championship. He's been racing in IMSA up to the DPIs with Juncos. And with the lockdown, he rediscovered his skills uh, behind the wheel, the simulated wheel of race cars, and has had some cracking yeah, races at the Nürburgring. He learned the Nürburgring very quickly indeed with a really impressive sim driver as his teammate called Alex Arana, who's based in Bilbao in Spain. They've never met each other, but they've got, <laughs> they've got a really great partnership going on. Yeah, now, moving back in front of Katzberg, under pressure from Edwards, as he later, it's very, it's been putting pressure on Edwards, sorry, it was the left and right of the graphic there, confused me as the cars moved right uh, Robbie Foley also close together, so it, it's Edwards who's now the cork in the bottle and holding up his two BMW teammates, Katzberg and Foley, Van Gisbergen now has a two second lead at Edwards, Rodrigo Fluke has a two and a half second lead over Van Gisbergen, so really, Nicky Katzberg with 20 minutes, less than 20 minutes to go, needs to make it happen now, at least so he can mount some sort of battle on the top two. And you've got to wonder who will have tyres left at the end. In the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre, Nick Damon, John Hindorf and Ben Constant Juris has been watching what's been going on in the pit lane. I mean, we are pretty certain now, well, surely we are certain, Ben, that everybody is fuelled to the end. Nobody's done anything silly like short fuels, or have they? Because Fluke was stationary for a very uh, was just for a long time, but what, what was he doing in the pit then? Have you been able to rewind and find out what happened there? Well, his exit was absolutely normal, um, but of course, being on pole position, his pit stall was at the very end of pit lane, so he he could accelerate out the pits without using his pit limiter. Everyone else behind would have had to be on limiter for a little bit and then release. Maybe that was an advantage, but I haven't been able to see the entrance into pit lane, which potentially was where he found five seconds on his competitors, even if he was stationary with two extra. Oh, getting very frenetic between Katzberg here and John Edwards. Yeah, Edwards just holding Swear in this three BMW M8 GTE uh, train at the moment. Robbie Forley with a watching brief at the moment in the Turner BMW, sitting uh, in fifth position. And Edwards, it would seem to me as Edwards just can't take Nick Damon the same kind of pace into the corners that he was doing earlier on. And he's he's trying to try some slightly different lines. And it looks like Katzberg to me is getting a little bit frustrated here with his BMW teammate. Absolutely. I mean, Katzberg knows he has to get past and he is being lightly held up. Possibly by one or two tenths in a second of lap, but enough to be all over the back of uh, John Edwards. Now, of course, the other thing to remember is that You've got Robbie Foley behind him as well, and Foley is, is just waiting to pick up the pieces and the potential podium if these two come together. So this is a battle royal of the BMW teammates, but obviously John Edwards knows that he's not stopping BMW in the championship. He, hasn't, he can race for himself. He hasn't got to let Katzberg through to get the championship over four, because if Katzberg doesn't win, well, he's still Spengler in the BMW. So it gives him a chance to push as hard as he likes and not let him through, whereas Katzberg probably right now is literally crossing his name off his Christmas card list. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are teammates, of course, John Edwards uh, and Nicky Katzberg for BMW. Katzberg uh, has recently been named as the third driver uh, for uh, Corvette Racing as well, of course, uh, in some of the longer uh, races. I think I'm right in, in seeing that, aren't I? Uh, I may have just made that Yeah, up. that was for Le Mans, though, wasn't it? Oh, yes, it was um, for Le Mans. Of course, of course they're, not they're not going. Yes, good point. I knew yeah. I'd seen that somewhere. Thank you, Ben, for reminding me. Uh, of that, no uh, new uh, mid-engined uh, C8R at Le Mans for this year. And we should also mention as well that uh, we'll not see Dan Binks in his Corvette racing gear either. The legendary number one mechanic and more likely crew chief for Corvette racing. My goodness, he can tell a story. Fantastic blow, and he's decided to call it a day after a long and very successful career in sports car racing. His son still uh, working uh, in the pit lanes of IMSA. He was working for Ford uh, the last time I caught up with him. So the family name will continue. But Dan, enjoy whatever you're going to do next. 
I'm sure he'll be uh, keeping a weather eye on what's going here, even though there's no Pratt and Villa or Corvette racing uh, cars in this. All right, 15 minutes to go to the end of the IMSA Racing uh, iRacing Pro Invitational season. This is the sixth and final round. And we've still got this. And John Edwards is scrappy. Yeah, John he's, Edwards he's struggling is for grip, isn't he? At the moment. It's all over the place. His pit stop was the same as the rest, so I would expect him to have four tyres on, but he is trying too hard and overdriving that car and he, you know, really threatening Nicky Katzberg in terms of where the car is being placed in dangerous areas. Katzberg needs to be careful to get past. I think it's a classic case of it's easier to follow than to lead. I think it's, it's it, you yeah, know, he's trying to punch through the air. Oh, here we go. The big front end of the BMW, and now he's got a big toe, but it's so hard to get round the inner loop. got to send but, it. Oh, no. Oh. And, and the problem is that Katzberg's battling for the championship, and as much as he wants to be up the road, he can't afford to be dropping his Michelins onto the dirt, which is what he's just and done. And here time. comes Foley, and Foley's going to get the run down the inside in the short shoot down into turn number six, but has to just back it off a tiny wee bit. And for the moment, John Edwards has a bit of breathing space. Van Gisbergen uh, is actually a little bit closer. There are He's only 1.7 seconds. Uh, no, he's not. Sorry, he's four seconds. Uh, up the road, so he's doubled no, no. his lead. And 1.7 seconds off the lead. He's, he's only 1.7 seconds. He's been gaining about three tenths a lap over the last three or four laps. So you know, at that rate, he should be quite close in the in before the end of the uh, 13 minutes, which is I suppose, what seven, eight laps. I think we've got eight, perhaps eight, nine laps. So it's, it's certainly enough for Shane to creep up the back of Riga Fluke. But unfortunately, the gap between the leader and Nicky Katzberg now is seven seconds, and that's going to take a miracle and some cracking overtaking. Computer says uh, 48 laps predicted, so seven laps at the end of this one. As they come through now to complete that, and through has gone Fluker. 13, just on 13 minutes to go. Another three tenths to uh, Van Gisbergen again. Well, the championship battle is intriguing, but Katzberg at the moment is seven seconds away from a championship win. Spengler, by the way, solidly inside the top 20 now. He's back up to 16th position, back on the lead lap and only three seconds behind Tristan Nunez, who's in the 77 Mazda Racing sponsored Ford in 15th position. So that there is maybe a top 15 for Spengler, but he doesn't need that. He's already got 152 points 152, 153, 153 points banked with his best five results of six races so far. It looks like he's not going to improve on that. His worst finish so far is a sixth position, which was at VIR mm. and oh, was it mid-Ohio? No, mid-Ohio. Mid-Ohio, excuse me. And he had that accident and he was Correct. taken out by... Um, part of an accident with two forwards, wasn't it? We swiped him, I think, with Sebastian Prio. Yeah, correct. Oh, and a mistake in front of that battle, or was it a, no, it's a it's decent a, driver? That's a, a lapped car. There's a lot of traffic at the moment just in front of this battle for uh, third, fourth. So Gilles Gounon pulling out the way in the Michelin liveried Ferrari. Uh, here comes Canapino as well onto the back of that. You know what? De Filippi and Canapino here, gentlemen, are not that far away. We could be seeing a five-car battle for the third step of the podium. A little further back. Just outside the top 10, Shinya Mishimi in the bright purple Porsche. Quite Black accents. Quite run for Shinya. He's, um, obviously, he's scored, if you add all the points together, quite highly and could still uh, finish um, third overall. But um, it's quite a race. He has not, after the first round, he's not qualified well, but he's driven every race well. This is the first race where he's still sort of mired so far down with only a few laps to go. But, you know, there's still a chance to make a couple of positions in the top 10. But Shinya... Very consistent, because it's a massively impressive eye rating, which means his score on the game is uh, pretty good. So he's a very, very experienced virtual racer. As is the man right behind him, Michael Cooper, another ear licensed driver in that number 30. First time we've seen him in the Purple People League. It gets a lovely run through. The S's at the top of the hill will get the drivers right, and he'll have the preferred line into the inner loop, and he'll take that position from Mishimi. So back to 12 for Shinya, and up goes Michael Cooper been racing in the IMSA Challenge series that normally precedes the IMSA iRacing Pro Invitational and due to his results there got the wild card entry into the final race 
of the big show and again a very experienced Ooh, traffic go ahead ben sorry nikki katzberg gaining a huge amount of time on john edwards because edwards being held up in traffic and suddenly the gap comes down uh, to, to just nothing. a couple of tenths of a second well yeah nothing actually you can see it there uh, that bmw that's still kind of getting in the way uh, was uh, just caught at the right the wrong moment going into the inner loop and uh, that's given katzberg another opportunity to perhaps get back into third spot i think that was coming through uh, the heel of the boot actually and up to turn nine the crossing the line now katzberg now trying to get past his teammate it looks like edwards has has tidied up his driving nick dearman in the last lap or two he was looking a little bit of a, a, a bit ragged earlier on and that was affecting his lap time i think he got a focus he had the focus of actually trying to get past the back markers rather than the focus of staying in front of katzberg he's now getting run. closer and closer and closer and he may get enough of a drag oh, 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 he's he's wobble and he's on the wrong side as they come up to the inner loop but let's see what happens he's, he's gonna, gonna send it he's, he's gonna, no oh. he's just backing off he's looking to perhaps get another they're, touch they're, they're really all over the back katzberg really pushing as hard as he can edwards do everything he can absolutely his right stay ahead just nine minutes to go so five laps well four laps and this one as they sweep, sweep now down to the bottom of the boot the sharp left as they go into the toe in a second yeah this is the bmw's together how many times have you been on the sim have you hit that arm core never, drivers right never, there never done that no that's never happened <laughs> don't, don't so easy to go in there too hot you think no I'm, I'm losing time i'm losing time i've got through quicker i've got yeah, I still got through quicker unbelievable so coming down to the last eight minutes as nick was mentioning and this is the battle for the championship effectively with katzberg the meat in the sandwich between his two bmw colleagues john edwards ahead and robbie Foley behind for turner in the 96 car it is the dash to the line rodrigo fluger and I, 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 i'll say this get the hashtag blame hindy ready but he's actually driven a really really good race we haven't seen too much of him but the mistakes and the inconsistencies in the second half of the race that plagued him after good qualifying all the way through this six race series nick damon he's he's cleaned that up they've disappeared he's got the setup right and that ford number 47 looks pretty pretty good at the front of the field yeah he really has put in a, a, a final league he's put together it's six minutes seven minutes ago a complete hour and a half of, of excellence he's had a number of good first halves had little innocence have not always his own fault but things have just happened in the second half of the race which you put him off now it's interesting one would say shane van gisbergen lost time through traffic but now he's eking back towards it 1.7 seconds is the gap new fastest lap of his race for shinya mishimi as he's trying to close down Michael Cooper for the uh, battle for 11. Bruno Spengler, by the way, has got past Tristan Nunez and it's now just 1.2 seconds behind Corey Lewis for 14. So Spengler 15 in the seventh car last seventh car last time around. His championship is looking secure at the moment with his only possible rival, Nicky Katzberg, sitting in fourth position. That's not going to be enough points it will increase nicky katzberg's points total it'll make it much closer he'll only lose by five or six the only scenario now where this ends well for katzberg if his katzberg managed to get past edwards and on the last lap van gisbergen sends it against fluke and it goes horribly wrong because it's just too big a gap now between second and third it's 6.7 seconds you're not going to make that up against class drivers in four laps so Katzberg needs to give himself the best chance of the victory and the best chance of himself by getting past Edwards and then hope for a miracle of stupidity. <laughs> That's another t-shirt, isn't it? I hope the guys from Full Talk here. A miracle of stupidity is required in the last six and a half minutes. So, down to the first corner. So, this will be... Let's just clear this up yeah. again. Um, as it stands right now, this will be Spengler's worst finish of the season. So he will right? finish on 153. He will finish on 153 points. He will have two wins, two seconds, and a sixth. Mm -hmm. Those, that is his absolute worst that he can get yes. right now. Yep. Uh, at the moment, what we've got is Nicky Katzberg has a first, a second, a third, and a ninth he needs that first position fourth is not going to be enough it's remember it's 35 it is, 32 30, so he's going to, be able to get 28 points correct so he's going to go to 47 yeah so he's six points off at the moment yeah but he will go to four and he will have a solid second place yeah and then shinja 
Mashimi will be battling uh, to see if he can get third position because Kenton Cook. No, he will go. He will. He will, he will go up into third. He'll get third because we, 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 he, he has Kenton five Cook solid and scores. Here. Yeah, Engen Correct. could have gone here. The only question is if Shane gets a first, or, a se or he should get a second, if he gets a first, how high up he'll come? He's got a couple of dodgy scores. So his drop scores will... I'm not sure where he'll go. I think he might go fourth or fifth overall um, for Shane Van Gisbergen with it, because he's going to get a very good score here. It's been a stunning season as we move into the last couple of laps. In fact, Rodrigo Fluke uh, is has crossed the line and Spengler is about to go for 14th position on the number 48 of Corey Lewis the Paul Miller racing car racing in the red white and black colours and hello to all of the PMR guys both in the uh, dealerships and also at the race shop just uh, well almost a lug nuts throw <laughs> from there to the racetrack at Road Atlanta in Brazelton, just outside of Brazelton in Georgia. And also a, a big hello to their drivers as well. It stays as it is. Shane Van Gisbergen, I think, is going to move to four. Right. He'll, actually, he'll actually leapfrog both uh, Philip Eng and, and Philip Cook. Yeah. yeah, okay. Because he's got and a zero. Machine, he will stay where he is, yeah. Yeah. He'll move to third. Because um, he's got a zero to drop. So. Nick Dearman doing the Boys, most. Just, I've been... Go ahead, Brent. So I've just been following Nick Katzberg and just watching whilst we were looking at other battles there. Katzberg just went too wide through the inner loop, taking full grass to try and get past John Edwards. And John Edwards would have had the call on his spotter to say car to his left. He would have known he was there. But Nicky just flew across the grass, but it all crossed up sideways. So as he exited the inner loop, he was losing loads of time, but uh, was able to defend from Rod Robbie Foley and it's back to status quo again. Uh, but he is still trying. He's still desperate to find a way past. I, I think, Ben, for me, the chance of Katzberg winning the championship went, disappeared uh, in two areas. One at his pit stop where he lost time and lost track position. But in those first couple of laps, maybe five laps, after the Porsche safety car pulled into the pit lane, not being able to get past John Edwards, I think, Ben, has really cost him badly in this last half to third of the race. I totally agree. John Edwards basically did the undercut. He pitted one lap earlier and was able to get back ahead of Nicky Katzberg. Katzberg's car doesn't look great. When we run no. on board with him, you can see it's a bit oversteery. It doesn't really sit as nicely as he would want. So uh, he's been struggling, I think, today with the car. Um, and he certainly hasn't had the pace of our, what looks to be our lead winner, Rodrigo Fluca. So, so... The car not looking great under underneath him. Uh, that's not what we've normally said, Nick, about he about BMWs. They've normally looked solid and looked like they've been on rails this season. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there will be subtle differences in the, in the setup. There will be subtle differences in the tyre wear, and you know, you, you can sit on board people. And just the car does look very loose. Now, it's not necessarily just the setup. It could be the way it's been driven. Perhaps he's got a bit of a frustration. Perhaps. Sometimes he's literally sticking his foot so far down on the accelerator that it's going through his carpet um, to try and get the thing to go a bit faster. But the guy in the flat downstairs, yeah, doors very doors worried, soft very up. worried. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's the attitude of the car, the hand of the car, can change based on how you're driving. If he's tensed up, it, yeah, he's, he's pushing and hard and tensing. Um, then it's going to be uh, another problem. But at the moment, yeah, it's just not really worked out. I mean, the first half of the race really worked out really quite well. He came in, in second, he knew what he was doing, fresh tyres, everything else, and then it's just kind of drifted away. It's not been a big moment like uh, Spengler on, on corner one. It's just a drift away. It must be very frustrating. Right, let's go back to the championship position. Katzberg will not be happy. Spengler wasn't happy early on with that first lap incident. Now, he's fought back to 14th position. But that is going to be, as we said before, his worst finish of the season. So forget about that. Go on. So the five scores that he's got already, which give him 153 points, Nick, according to our IMSA points table here, that's what Spengler's going to finish on. Yep. Uh, Sebring, whether the whether race play, middle, high road, American VIR, he had two wins, two seconds, and a sixth. And that gives him 153 points. Nicky Katzberg, the best he can get at the moment, we think he's going to finish around 148. Um, 
with his fourth place finish here uh, and that's just not enough he'll, he'll, be drop his, he'll be drop he'll be dropping his 28th finish his VIR concert yeah. the, the race where he overtook everybody and then fell off and overtook everybody again and then fell off just a, it, 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 that was really lost on a double error in qualifying he didn't get a decent lap in that VIR race and had to start from the back time is about to expire so where is Rodrigo Fluger are we going to have one more lap for the Peruvian driver in the number 47 Ford from Precision Performance Motorsport. He can lift off here. The white flag then is out. It's how it works in this simulation. Fluka is going to take a win for Ford. So BMW, Porsche and two Ford victories to finish the end of the season. Fluka finally converts from pole position. But the championship is going the way not of the best of the two finishers in the championship contention. It's going to go despite that nightmare at the beginning to Bruno Spengler. As through has come Van Gisbergen, his best finish of the season in second. John Edwards is on the podium in third. Nicky Katzberg only gets fourth, so finishes with that fourth position. He's going to be a handful of points shy. Two corners for Bruno Spengler, showing exactly the same facial expression as when he was sitting in the pit lane going nearly two laps down earlier on. Now there's a little smile from Bruno as he's realised that he's through the final corner. He's to the chequered flag. And Bruno Spengler for BMW Team Red is the IMSA iRacing Pro Invitational Champion for 2020. Despite finishing in his worst finish of the season, 14th, in the Konica Minolta presents IMSA iRacing at the Glen. Forget about the incident on lap one, Bruno. Forget about everything else. That has been Ben Constantinus, a championship victory that has been built until this race on consistency and staying out of trouble. A worst finish until today of sixth position. And that is exactly how you win a championship, Ben. And built on fantastic qualifying results as well. He always was well up there, clear of all the trouble until today. Uh, and today was his drop score. There is the celebrations and the smiles. He's got the donuts going. And considering I saw him in September as a very, very bad eye racing <laughs> driver, he really has put in the miles. And he is now one of the very best. We'll get a word with Bruno, I'm sure. vision let's confirm the victory first of all for rodrigo fluke the second and three quarters it looks like he controlled that actually towards the end he put in a couple of quick laps when van gisbergen looked like he was closing down and rodrigo handled the second half of the race better than we've seen him in any of his outings this season so far that's his first win and obviously his best result van gisbergen on the podium in second another good result for porsche and the kiwi has his best result of the season ahead of john edwards with his best result of the season and three different manufacturers again on the podium nicky katzberg will be disappointed i think the door was open for him it was a jar he sort of got his foot in there, but he couldn't squeeze through and close the deal. He finished in fourth ahead of Robbie Foley and Conor de Filippi, another couple of BMW drivers. Augustin Canapino, once again, the Argentinian, the best of the Ferraris, uh, ahead of Jesse Cron. Lawrence Van Tour, what a, an improvement for Lawrence. Struggled in, in his qualifying early on in the season, struggled in his racing. He's got better and stronger all the way through. And despite having a damaged car, Gilles Gounon, finishes in the top 10. Good finish for Jules in the second of the Ferraris. Michael Cooper, in his debut in the Big Show, finishes in 11th ahead of Shinji Mishimi. They had a cracking scrap all the way through. Riding Dickinson in 13th for Porsche. Then Spengler taking the championship with that 14th position. El Masson. Right, that's your top 20. Uh, and we have Rodrigo Fluca uh, in the broadcast booth with us in the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre. Rodrigo, congratulations. That was a super, super drive. Thanks uh, for, for joining us here 
in the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre. Rodrigo, finally, you've converted a pool position to a win. How are you feeling? Wow, thank you wow, for the interview. For the interview. I, am I am super happy right now. Happy right now. It's, uh, it's, it's something uh, that I've been waiting you know, for, you know, for the whole championship. First of all, I want to, first thank, all, I want to thank my teams, running my teams, running teams, running teams, running teams who support me this race. Me this also race. to all my also sponsors, all my sponsors, sponsors uh, Peru, uh, Santa Chakra, uh, Santa you, can Santa Chakra you can see the, the sponsors in my car. So, you guys yeah, are about, the race, about the race. Yeah, about the race, I can say that, yeah, since the beginning we were fast. Watkins Glen is a track that I really want. So, yeah, I hope that, I hope that, that we, well, the, the, this can, yeah, it's time to, to be happy, you know? Hello, Rodrigo. Hello, hello. Yeah, Rodrigo, how were you so quick in the pit lane? Your pit stop um, was quite long, stationary, but your transit time was very quick. Yeah, well, the strategy was managed by running team sport this race. I was focused in driving. I think that uh, helps a lot, you know, for the driver to be focused on what he needs to be focused. Did you short fuel the car? Because you did take four tyres, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we take, yeah, the, four yeah, we take the four tyres. I, I think that, I, was, I the think that was the best option because we, because were, in the we were in the front. So yeah, so, it worked yeah, very it well. Very well. At the end, at the end, Shane, Shane was super fast. So yeah, it was it was a thing about maintaining the pace. When he was getting close to me, I did a really good lap, even even really close to my fastest lap. So I'm happy with that, also, you know. Congratulations on your first victory, Rodrigo, uh, and a great season for you as well. Thanks for joining us, mate. Thank you very much for the interview, John. Uh, well, yeah, you know, like sim racing, it's uh, it manages my desire of driving. And uh, well, I, of course, it's not the same as the real life, but hopefully next week I'm going to be able to to train in karting and getting prepared for for the championship. You know, this situation of the COVID nineteen. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, I'm sorry for this situation, but hopefully we can put everything together for the championship. Uh, well, I hope to be there on 4th of July, such a special day for IMSA and also for the country. Rodrigo, we'll see you at the track soon, mate. Well done. Uh, let's uh, head to Thank you. John Thank you. Edwards, uh, I think, is with us now. John, can you hear me? Hello, John Edwards, can you hear me? Hang on one second, we'll turn off the logo. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Drew. Ah, and uh, there is John in vision uh, as well. John, that was a hard-fought race there, but you uh, you finished the final race of the season on the podium. Uh, you had a lot of pressure in that last section of the race from, from Nicky Katzberg. Uh, you were obviously aware of that, and he was going for the championship. No team orders there then, mate. No, uh, obviously in the beginning of the, of the race, you know, we swapped positions a couple of times. We were... Um... I said on the radio, I, I thought I was quicker, um, so they let me go by. And I think in those first couple laps with cold tires, I was quicker. But then uh, Nikki picked up some pace in the middle of the stint, and then I caught back up at the end. So, um, you know, in that middle of the stint, I was struggling, so I gave it back to him. But, you know, that was the beginning of the race. At the end, we were, uh, we were in a hard fight for the, for the podium. And, um, you know, I think had, had Nikki been the only BMW driver in with a shot at the podium, then obviously I would have let him by. But um, it was guaranteed a BMW driver was going to win. Um, so, uh, yeah, I was, I was happy to fight him for it. But as you can see, I'm, I'm very red. I was sweating uh, like crazy during the race, during that fight. So um, I'm sure my heart rate was, was just as high as it, as it is in the real car because it was a really hard fight and we were, um, we were going for it. But ultimately, you know, Nikki was, Nikki was aggressive but, uh, but always clean. So I tried to, tried to be the same with him. And uh, I think it turned out to hopefully be a pretty good show because it was really fun inside the car. Yeah, we enjoyed it, uh, John, definitely. How important is it uh, for you guys to use the, the, this competition to stay sharp? It's, it's made me stay sharp doing all, all this um, <laughs> on, online and the sim, sim racing that we've been doing here at IMSA Radio and, and at uh, RSL. It, it's got my mind working again. Does it work the same way for you guys? Absolutely. I think, um, it, you know, it's really cool when you look at the when you look at the, the physics of the software, even down to um, between turn, uh, turn seven and eight here, there's some weird bumps on the track at Watkins Glen that you always feel 
uh, as you go down the straight there. And, and while I was warming my tires, I could actually see that the car was kind of bouncing in a, in a weird way there. So the, the software is very accurate. Um, as a driver, the, the pure driving portion of it, you're obviously missing the, the G-forces. But, um, but when you get in a battle like that, like I had with Nikki, um, when, when you have that pressure and you have to manage that pressure and, and still stay, you know, inch perfect while you're, while you're pushing hard, um, it, it's obviously a very hard thing to do. And normally we get a lot of practice um, every weekend when we are racing uh, through the season. So um, we've never quite had a situation like this where we're, uh, you know, out of the car for six months straight. And so, um, so it's really good. I think, you know, ha having had some good battles and, uh, and everything, it, it's really, I think, going to help keep us sharp when we go back to racing. Cause ultimately, you know, nobody's allowed to test and we only have, uh, two hours of practice for two drivers before we go racing at Daytona. So I think it's been a great way to keep keep sharp, not just from a driving perspective, but from a, a competitive perspective. Um, you know, bat battling back and forth, um, as you saw at the end with with Nikki and I there. Yeah, we've enjoyed it, John. Thank you very much indeed for the entertainment. Thank you for how. Uh, seriously you and bmw uh, have taken it and for the respect that you've shown all of your competitors right through out the field and not too long to wait now before we go full metal racing mate thank you uh let's chat then with bruno spengler uh now are we going to get bruno in vision or are we just going to hear him i know we've got a camera uh, on him uh, Bruno, are you with us? Bruno Spengler joining us in the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre. Bruno, how about that, mate? Your worst finish of the season, but you still win the championship. Oh, man. Oh, I, man. Tell you, I tell you, this was, this was a, lot a lot of emotions right there right because, right because uh, qualifying uh, didn't, didn't run great. I mean, great. the lap I did the lap was did. not a shit not a lap, lap, but it wasn't but it was great. great. It was great. just not enough to be in the first two rows. But I had a good start, and yeah, unfortunately, turn one... The Ford spun and took me out uh, pretty bad, um, and I rolled over. That was it for me. The race was done. So that was, uh, yeah, not a very shiny very start, shiny let's say, start, unfortunately. Let's say, unfortunately. Um, um, and then, uh, and then yeah, I, I, yeah, I was kind of sure I was, was going sure to lose the championship. And then a bit later, I got the information that Mickey had to win the race to close the deal. So it helped me a bit to feel better, but. That was a, let's that say, was a lot a, of emotions in there, and I'm super there. happy it worked at the end. end. I mean, it's, I mean, it's uh, uh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of hours in there. hours in there, a lot of support lot of from support the BS competition guys and the BMW, and, BMW yeah, and I'm super happy we, we, we won it. I mean, it was tough, but it was great. And thanks to IMSA, thanks to everybody for organizing such a thing during the difficult times we had. It was great for us drivers to train. I loved it. I loved it. Uh, in terms of how you were feeling after that first lap, it was Richard Highstand who cut across the front of you. I've got to say, you, you won't know this, but he was trying to avoid Robbie Foley. They both went off wide and he caught the curb and just speared across in front of you. We saw you sitting in the pits while the car was getting repaired. There was not a flicker of emotion on your face, but I, I've known you a long time. And <laughs> Nick Damon, my core commentator, said the same thing. I think you were steaming. You were really, really <laughs> upset at that point, weren't you? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I was super right. upset. I, was super I mean, upset. I, mean, I was talking I to was Lauren, talking to uh, Lauren uh, who is always uh, with me always on the radio. The radio. Um, um, and I was telling Lauren him... Lauren Heinrich, yeah? Yeah, Lauren Heinrich. Yeah, Lauren Heinrich. I, was Heinrich. I was telling him, I was like, man, that's it. We are done. The championship is over. And I was... Yeah, I was going crazy. going crazy at, inside of me, you know, on the other, on the other side, on the other side, I couldn't believe, I couldn't what, just believe happened, what just happened. You know, when you're surprised you know, when about something and you're so and disappointed, I just couldn't just believe couldn't what just happened, just happened you know. Happened, and, you know? And, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, I, then I, then uh, we took then, the risk to just take two tires and do a short pit stop and everything. And could come back to P14, but yeah, as you said, I was steaming so badly. So badly. Yeah, that got you back on the lead lap. When did you? I mean, I know how bmw are i know how you are as well and i'd certainly know how lauren heinrich is so i'm i'm presuming bruno that you did all the arithmetic and you knew that nicky wasn't scoring enough points you were going to drop the score today so you had your 153 points already in the bank so you, you didn't i mean improving your positions that was a bit of fun at that point because that was going to be your drop score yeah 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, but we we kind of realized that, let's say, pretty late, um, like uh, way after the way after the pit stop, uh, where we had a few talks uh, here and there, and then at some point, Lauren came on the radio and said, "Man, um, if Nikki doesn't win the race, you're champion." Um, and then oh, that was great, and I was so so happy, and I was looking at the stand-ins on my screen. And just uh, hoping that Nikki was not going to get in the first place, um, and driving my race and trying to catch up, um, you know, on the guys in front. And I was like, okay, if I can finish in the top ten, at least I would be kind of happy. Um, yeah, but it's it's good. I'm I'm happy about the end result, and uh, it was a good fight against Nikki the whole season. He was a tough opponent, and uh, that was good fun. Thanks to you guys us in the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre. Ben Constantinus and Nick Damon have been my co-commentators up in London for RSL. It's been Tim Gray, our executive producer. It was Drew, Cisco and the team uh, in Boston, Massachusetts, who have put this all together in terms of the visuals for us and have been a brilliant set of colleagues. And one day, I'll get to shake them by the hand and settle down with an, av uh, an adult beverage uh, as well. It's been a great effort from IMSA, all the series sponsors and partners, and from you, the viewers, the fans, many of you who will not have been particularly au fait about sim racing and may have had your reservations about it. I hope we've changed your mind. We've taken it seriously. We've given it the respect it deserves here on Michelin Post Race Tech. That's it for the 2020 IMSA iRacing Pro Invitational season. Bruno Spengler is your champion. I'm John Hindhoff for the whole team. Bye-bye. <laughs>